so right. Okay, y'all can still see it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so let's look at this. Narcissistic personality disorder. One of the several types of personality disorders is a mental condition in which that people have an inflated sense of their own importance, a deep need for excessive attention and admiration, troubled relationships, and a lack of empathy for others. But behind this mass of extreme confidence lies a fragile self-esteem that's vulnerable to the slightest criticism. A narcissistic personality disorder causes problems in many areas of life, such as relationships, work, school, or financial affairs. People with narcissistic personality disorders may be generally unhappy and disappointed when they are not given the special favors or admiration they believe they deserve. They may find their relationships unfulfilling and others may not enjoy being around them. Treatment for narcissistic personality disorder centers around talk therapy. So let's talk about it. Because we're dealing with people who are narcissistic, psychopathic, and sociopathic. So the fake five dollar Indians. I did a short version on this information. This is going to be the longer version. The Doss Rose and Alexia five dollar Indians. Doss Rose rife with opportuni um, opportunistic white men and early appropriation. All right, Alyssa. Landry, March 21st, 2017. It may be fashionable to play Indian now, but it was also trendy 125 years ago when people paid $5 a piece for falsifying documents declaring them natives on the Doss Roll. These so-called $5 Indians paid government agents under the table in order to rip the rape to uh, rip the benefits that came with having Indian blood, mainly white men with an appetite for land. Okay. Understandable? <laughs> Chief of the Cherokee Nation, Bill John Baker, was born in Cherokee County, Oklahoma, where his family has been for four generations. And we spoke about it before that this is English and Irish of mixed and um, ethnicity, like many Cherokee citizens. So many of the Cherokee citizens are mixed ethnicities. But let's look at his ethnicity. He is one over 32, or rather 3.1% Cherokee by blood. 3.1%. 1% Cherokee. So he's not even 10%. Hell, he's not 5%. Cherokee by blood. But yeah, he's the chief. And we spoke about this before. He graduated from Telequa High School in 1969. Yeah, I was born. And from Northeastern State University in 1972 with a bachelor's degree in political science and history. According to the Black Book, on page 88, the Acts of 1785, chapter um, LXXV111, it says, Every person whose grandfathers or grandmothers, any one, is or shall have, shall ha have been a Negro, although all his outer um, progenitors except that descended from the Negro shall have been white persons, shall be deemed a mulatto. And so every person who shall have one-fourth or more Negro blood shall in like manner be deemed a mulatto. 
This act is to be in force from January the 1st, 1787. Now, continue on. Well, it's the act of 1910, and I quote, Any person having one sixteenth or more Negro blood shall be deemed a colored person. And every person not a colored person, oh, hold, hold on, and every person not a colored person having one fourth or more Indian blood shall be deemed an Indian. One fourth. So one fourth is 25%. What right or wrong? Right. Okay. Now I just want to make sure that I'm not tripping. <laughs> No, nah, you ain't tripping. All right, so it says one fourth or more Indian blood shall be doing the Indian. One thirty-two. Now one thirty over thirty-two or three point one percent is not one fourth, which is twenty-five percent. Or more Indian blood shall be deemed an Indian. It's not even one sixth. No. <laughs> you see, this is why uh, I guess some people didn't do very well with fractions in school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but I know it well enough to know that he don't meet the criteria. Right or wrong? Correct. <laughs> okay. Correct. But he's the chief of the Cherokee Nation. Mm. Here's some more cheese. This is the Choctaw Nation now of Oklahoma. So they're in the same state. And this one here, he has blue eyes. So you know he ain't even got 3.1%. It's funny that they don't want to be black, but at the same time, they want all the property and everything. They right. don't want to be black, but that they want. Well, black don't have a check every month. <laughs> Belonging to a tribe that a state and federally, uh, federally recognized does. Every month, they get a check. Wow. Yes. For reparations. So this is why they don't want to be black. They want to be Indian, you know, because as we just finished seeing, they want to live off the land. But I, the I, land actually are monthly checks. May I understand this correct? Are you saying that they, they're collecting money that we're supposed to be collecting? Is that what you're saying? Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. Wow. Mm hmm So here's the assistant chief of the Choctaw. All right. Jack Austin Jr. So this is the chief of the Choctaw Nation. So we just seen the chief of the Cherokee, Bill John Baker. And now we see the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma chief, Gary Banton. Right, and his assistant chief, Jack Austin Jr. Now, he has brown eyes, and Jack Austin Jr. has brown eyes, but Gary has blue eyes. That is a recessive trait, and definitely will not and does not make you a Cherokee nor Choctaw or any other indigenous tribe or nation. So when did the pilgrims become the chiefs is the question. <laughs> you know it's bad when fake outrage of white Native Americans, i.e. pale face, 
aimed at African Americans representing their own Native American heritage is so blatant, racist, and hypocritical that even the mascots which they pretend to find offensive or embarrassed. So if you look at the real natives and how their skin is actually copper compared to those in which that state that I mean, you look at the definition of American, a native of America of America originally applied to the Aboriginals or copper colored races found here by the Europeans, but now applies to the descendants of Europeans born in America. So see this is how the pilgrims became the chiefs by saying and claiming that they were American. So now they can join the tribes called Five Dollar Indians, the Dorse Roll, and the legacy of the Five Dollar Indians. This is how this is happening, how that has happened. So pale Europeans masquerading as Indians, Five Dollar Indians, whose genetic blueprint, all right, their um, AutoZone, DNA does not correspond to the founders of the Miramar archaeological site in Argentina or the Hayo um, Atico archaeological site in the Velas um, Suelo Basin near Pablo, Mexico or the Topper site in Allendale, South Carolina or to the ancestors of the ancient pygmy skulls found in um, Holliston Mills, Eastern Tennessee, or to the mound builders, or to the ancestors of the ancient misnomic African migrants or migrations, the Southeastern Asians, the Australoids, the Oceans, and the Native American Siberian. Mongolians or Mongoloids and other ancient Asiatic migrations, but they have managed to upset our birthrights. So they are the cultural vultures and benefit from this fraud for generations. As a true son of the soil, I do not recognize these impostors and charlatans. This falsity was created as a smokescreen, a buffer, by and for the corporate United States democracy and the corporate 50 states democracies to steal land, raw minerals, and natural resources from the true Achitanis of America, of the Americas. When the true Achitanis um, speaks against this fraud, then the buffers can open their mouths and speak against the true Archetonists on behalf of their corporate master, puppet masters. The days of this fraudulent act are over, thanks to DNA, genetic technology. Once again, the days of this fraudulent act are over. These acts are over, thanks to DNA, genetic technology. Mm-mm. These $5 Indians, a.k.a. paper Native Americans, was created through the smoke, through the stroke of a pen. And this is why we say that the pen is more mightier than the sword. You don't catch no real Washington going out here with no damn weapon and guns and shit. Talking about we damn going to, no, no, we, we, we have those. Because we got the right in order to protect ourselves from criminals. But we're not going to go out here and shoot up nobody, shoot up no place, shoot up people. Not no real Washington, because we understand that the pen is more money than the sword. We can write ourselves back into history. When one so-called Native American $5 fake Indian come at me yet in order to debate me, they say they're little sly remarks, but come with the information. I come with hundreds of books. Let's do it. I'll issue a challenge to any 
so-called Native American, pale face, to any Egyptian, pale face, to any Jewish, pale face, and to anyone else who want to take up the banner. All I'm saying is that one would need to go and research the information that we have already revealed for at least for the last 15 years on YouTube. We have over 300 videos, in-depth information. So the, these $5 Indians, a.k.a. paper Native Americans created through the stroke of a pen and have made contracts in this fraud and received land and funds under this fraud in collusion with the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the BIA, and the Smithsonian Institute, who has hidden and destroyed thousands of artifacts to hide the fact that the very people degraded to the status of Negro, Black, and Colored African Americans and African American, Afro-Americans and African Americans are actually the first Paleo-Americans. Or actually the first Paleo-Americans. Or actually the first Paleo-Americans. But fraud validates all forms of contract and makes them null, void, ad antidio. Null and void. This is a violation of international law. Uh, international law. And they have willfully neglected to deal with this fact. And this is why we won't find anyone to debate this information. They won't find it, we won't find anyone to debate me on this information. And none of these Negroes would now be out talking about any of this because before 2009, The masses did not even know this information before the SETI debate. We did the SETI debate, me and SETI, in two, a matter of fact, on April the 19th, on my birthday, on my, on my birthday in 2009, and the people in there, when I gave the genetic information about the shovel teeth, they refused to raise their hands. Only about three people raised their hands, but then when I started to say, get them goddamn hands up. I say, this is a stick up. Get them goddamn hands up. <laughs> stick, up with, stick up with the knowledge. All of a sudden, almost 400 people in the room, nearly everybody in the room, said they had shovel teeth. Now, wait, wait. Now, now this, this is amazing how it went from three to 400. <laughs> so that means that they were lying to themselves. And this is the same thing that we see with the RBG, the same thing that we see with um, the Nation of Islam, as well as also with the Hebrew Israelites, the same thing. You are not just one thing. You are the Asiatics, as Prophet Nubdrali and even the Nation of Islam and the Nation of Azimuth teach. That you are Asiatics. But we're not black. But we're not black. Right. Yeah, there's only there's only there's, only, there's only there's like I stated, only one people with the show of teeth and those are the Native Americans. How did you as Africans get them damn Native American teeth in your damn mouth if you're not the Native American? See this see this is where DNA kills or mythology. See, this is where this happens at. So these um, individuals, so this is a violation of international law, for they have willfully neglected to deal with this fact. Since the time that the former president of the United States, William J. Clinton, or Billy Bob himself, had issued an executive order to compel states and federal agencies to uphold human rights, the federal, state, and local um, corporate democracies have done a horrible job towards enforcement. 
See the Virginia Racial Integrity Act of 1924, which is when Walter Plucker, his um, information as it spread through the nation. Executive Order 13107, International Convention of the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, CERF, Treaty of 1965. C, the Convention of Rights and Duties of States, Inter-American, December 26, 1933, 55A, C, and 56. United States Statutes at Large, 59, Statute 1031 through 1218. United Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, 2007, in total. Levin versus Virginia, 388, United States 1. 1967, Articles of, Article 6 of the Constitution for the United States of America, 1787 through 1791. The uh, Bouvier's Law Dictionary or Dictionary of Law, 1856, Maxims of Law, the Maxim Law, Salus Populi S. Suprema Lex, which means the safety of the people is the supreme law. So they say that police are supposed to protect the people, but really they are there to enforce policies of the municipalities, the, municip the uh, municipalities. That's, that's who they're there for, all right, and the general statutes of the state. And those statutes supersedes natural law, human rights. Jura Sanguinis. No, no, jury, civilly, um, diritmi, um, post um, as supreme lex, the safety, um, excuse me, um, the people of, yeah, the right of blood and kinship cannot be destroyed by any civil law. So, jura, sanguinis, no, no, jury, um, civilly, um, diritmi, um, post the right of blood and kinship cannot be destroyed by any civil law. So can they destroy DNA? Your DNA now states that you are indigenous to here. And they're accepting chiefs with 3.1%. In which that they just had laws that stated that if you was one-fourth, in other words, 25% native indigenous, then you would be classified as Indian. Well, I'm here to tell you that all of us have that. And I can prove it. So let's continue on. Magna Copa Dolores Is. Great neglect is equivalent to fraud. Was a fraud always a fraud? Mm. Just as fraudum, numicoquam, cohabitant. Right and fraud never goes together. All right? Right and fraud never goes together. Fraud is as from Dolores, Mimini, um, Petro, Cianotti, um, Debunk, which means fraud and deceit should excuse no man. Fraudus S. Celeri uh, Fraudem. It is fraud to conceal the fraud. Donus Actoris Non Nocit Secessity, which means the fraud of a possessor does not prejudice the successor. So the fraud of a, of a possessor, which is, we're talking about these $5 Indians, their fraud, does not prejudice the successor. And we will be successful. Otherwise, the ancestors wouldn't have given us this information. So here's Chief Pushmataha, who was the real chief of the Choctaw Nation, 1764 to 1824. And as you see here, you can see him. And what would you say that his complexion is? 
he is one of the copper colored natives, right or wrong. So how did we go from that to this? Because they don't look copper colored to me. They don't look copper colored to me. Wow. So now this is Chief Philip Martin, longtime tribal chief of the Mississippi Band of the Choctaw. Now look at his complexion. He's a real chief. By the wall. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He definitely looked different than these chiefs. <laughs> That's the bullshit. Right? He looked different. I would say that he's more us than he is them. As you see, clearly, um, Chief on Push Mataha is. He could be my grandfather. Uh oh. What did you say about them? This is a little bit too obvious, isn't it? <laughs> my people. Real deal. Yeah. And what they use to get their hair straight or wavy, in this sense, is bear grease. Buffalo grease. Nowadays, uh, uh, I know when we was rocking our waves back in the 80s and 90s, we called it Dex Murray <laughs> grease. But notice that these Native Americans look nothing like these. <laughs> they look more like us. So this is our heritage. All right, so this is Joanne Kelly, Dr. Joanne Kelly, dental hygienist. All right, and she wrote this uh, 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 August the 10th, 2019. She says, Shovel teeth, shovel shaped teeth, are usually the upper front teeth from the lingual tongue side of the teeth. They are scooped out. Usually, Native uh, North American natives have this formation. What? Usually, North American natives have this formation. So, see, I need to see. I need to look in the mouths <laughs> of the pilgrims. You think they have? You, you think Gary? Have you shoveled teeth? Nope. What, what about um, Baker? Mm. Well, we can't wait to find out. Right here, shovel-shaped incisors. Shovel incisors or incisors whose lingual sh um, surface are scooped as a consequence of lingual marginal ridges, crown curvatures, and base um, tubercles, either alone or in combination. <coughs> shovel, check this out, shovel-shaped incisors are significantly common in American Indians from North, Central, and South America. North, Central, in South America. They are also common in East and Central Asians, of course, because that's where a portion of the North, Central, and South American lineage comes from. Hungarians, 
the Inuit and the Aleut, which are the Eskimos of Northeast Asia and North America, including but not limited to the Inuit people of Eastern Alaska and Arctic Canada and Greenland and Europeans in African groups. Listen, listen. And European and African groups show sh- um, shaped upper incisors are uncommon and not present. Let's say that again. God damn it. In European and African groups, show shaped upper incisors are uncommon or not present or not present. Not present. So Africans don't have shovel teeth, as I told them in 2009 at the SETI debate. So this is why they can't debate me, because I already showed the evidence of this information. Twelve years ago. (laughs) Maybe twelve years ago, we already showed this information. And before, 12 years ago, Dan Calloway did not exist as far as his information. All right. Now, any of these other individuals that are now coming out over the last five years talking about indigenous affairs. It was until we did that video in 2009 that this information went worldwide. How do I know? It's because Sarnetta is the one who's selling the tape. And guess what? Sarnetta said, I was his number one seller for 19 years. So that means I was sold Bobby, Phil, Debit Blair, etc. During those time periods. So, once again, in European and African groups, shovel shape, upper incisors are uncommon or not present. So who has these shovel teeth? We're going to say this again. Shovel shape incisors are significantly, significantly common in American Indians from North, Central, and South America. All right, so this is DNA. Here are the shovel teeth. Shovel-shaped Indian teeth. Do you have these shaped teeth in your mouth? To anybody on this line who has these teeth in your mouth, please speak on it. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Well, well, hold on. We're going to do it one at a time. Alicia, you said you have these teeth in your mouth? Yes, indeed. All right. So, Chief, you got them at the upper, four upper teeth? How you got them? Yes, indeed. Oh, well, that means that you are (laughs) more than just African. You are. I got, big, I got big buck teeth too. Okay, okay. So, so you have these teeth in your mouth, and that means that you're not African. You are Native American. Because how many you, you you have all four of your upper teeth, and how many do you have in which that you feel the indenture behind? What's that? Eight. Huh? Let's see how many do I have? Yeah, I'm talking about the upper teeth, the four upper teeth. Yeah, the first four upper teeth. Yep, the first four. Now, fill behind them, and how many do you have out of those four? All four. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and one of them is crooked. Okay. Well, it don't matter if it's crooked. <laughs> you got it. So, you know what that means? You know, that means that you are more than 50% Native American. In fact, your number goes as high as 90%. Well, I lost one of my uh, front teeth. 
Well, yeah, it's all right, Brother L. If you got the other ones that matched, then I'm pretty sure that was the same. That was one of the ones. It's the one, though. It's all right. It's the one, though. It's the one, though. I can't hear you, but as you say, you got the hook, you got the uh, shovel teeth. Yeah, that hook, yeah, shaped like a hook. Right, right, shaped like a hook. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. All right, so so, so, how many do you have, Brother L? I got one, two, three, one missing. Okay, so that's uh, four. So four, all four, five. so all, well, hold on, Brother L, we just, we just talking about the first, the four, upper four. Upper four, yeah. Okay, just upper four. All right, so inside of right, so that means that yours is high. Also, anyone else who has these teeth in their mouth? Anybody on here should have these teeth in their mouth. Otherwise, you've been drawn to this information because now the the Native American Aboriginal Indigenous ancestry is guiding us to correct all errors. Yeah, I got them too. All right, how many do you have at the upper top? I got four. All right, there we go. Played it. All right. <laughs> and my arms. Well, I I gotta be honest. I have the shovel shape, but I don't have on the inside that indenture. Well, I'm I'm mixed with a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So. No, it's all right. It's all right. But you, yeah, if you have the curvature. All right, you may not have, um, you know, the full indenture like this. But I have the curvature. But you have the curvature, and so that still is the shape of the shovel tooth. All four and one, one twisted. Okay, it's all right. Anyone else? Yes, I'll tell you, I have that as well. No, okay. Yes, that's because he, he's also from, from Trinidad. I hear yeah. the accent. Right. Yes, he's from Trinidad and Tobago. Right, he is from Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> Indeed. And um, uh, uh, Brother Joff is, is, um, is my cousin too. So uh, we got um, Chief Joff on here. We got Chief Alicia's on here. And both of them are my cousins. So uh, uh, we, we get this done. We'll get this done. <laughs> All right. So. This is the criteria for anyone who claims to be Native American. They have to have shovel teeth. You see how they destroyed everything else? Nothing else even matters. Okay, what you say, nigga, let me see your teeth. <laughs> Particularly them. You don't got 3.1% Cherokee. I'm pretty sure he don't have shovel teeth. So here it is. I've been asked the question about what shovel teeth really look like. Finding good photos is really difficult. No, it's not. Because I'm glad I'm glad. One of our followers. Fletcher Freeman, who has contributed several articles, have also written about Indian teeth. Or the Charoco, or Charoke, or um, the city community website. As mentioned in this article, thick hair, small bobs, uh, shovel shaped teeth, and more. This mutation for shovel shaped teeth is an Asian mutation. That's why they refer to as Asiatics, because it's an Asian mutation. That happened about 35,000 years ago. The good news is that the cause is fairly pronounced. It's easy to determine if you have it or not. And it's a good indicator of native heritage. Hold on, let, let's say this again. The good news is that because it's fairly pronounced, it's easy to determine if you have it or not. And as Good indicator. It's a good indicator of North of Native excuse me, heritage. Mm. It's a good indicator of Native heritage. So if we have these teeth in our mouths, y'all, uh, that's a good indicator that we are Indigenous, Aboriginal, Native heritage here in North America, Central and South America, and the Adjoining Islands. In the Pacific Islands. 
Okay? Fletcher, who kind of um, was, was kind enough to share with us a photo of his own shovel shaped teeth. Okay? I have shovel shaped teeth too. All four of my upper middle teeth. In addition, they have a bony um, shaped ridge near the gum line that is very pronounced and extend down over part of the shovel. Okay. So this is a hereditary trait and easy to discern. It's also interesting to add the parents and other family members if they have this trait. Just be sure to ask while they still have their teeth. Inches don't count. See, see, that's a little junkie joke. So, my thoughts. This is archaeological, um, um, archaeological, um, logical, or logic, excuse me, archaeology, uh, or the Archaeological Institute of America do this. It says, new thoughts on shovel-shaped teeth. Why is it a new thought? How, how new do it have to be? <laughs> Well, allegedly, this mutation happened 35,000 years ago, so it's, it's a new thought that something that happened 35,000 years ago. So let's look at it. Berkeley, California, a genetic mutation links to shovel shape and sizes may have been more consequently, or consequently, uh, consequently uh, impact on breastfeeding. Okay, so they say that happened because of breastfeeding. According to a report in Science Magazine, research is led by Leslie um, um, Hilusco of the University of California Berkeley suggests a genetic mutation that became prevalent among the ancestors of Native Americans some two or twenty thousand years ago may have helped us to survive the dark, cold Arctic climate of, of course, the Bering Strait or the Bangia by enhancing mother's milk ducts and increasing the amount of fat and vitamin D passed to infants. This gene is also linked to the growth of thicker hair, increased development of sweat glands, and a shift to several shaped incisors. The gene mutation is thought to have first occurred some 30,000 years ago in China. All right? So 35 to 30,000 years ago. When a hot, humid climate, leading researchers to speculate that the um, East Asians and Native Americans were incidentally to the benefit brought by natural selection through the sweat glands and improved infant nutrition. So this was an improvement to infant nutrition for vitamin D and fat from the breasts of the mother. This is how we got these shovel teeth, these shovel-shaped teeth. Okay. This is how this happened. So do you know the genetics of Native Americans? Actually, they don't. But we do. And they're called shovel teeth. And everyone on here has them. So what many people don't know is that there's a difference between an American Indian full blood who have predominantly mongoloid genes and Native American pure blood, original Negro genes. The people that you see today have light skin, various shades from beige to red, and even some dark brown, of course, by mixing, have shovel teeth. Have shovel teeth. I don't think Baker has it though, but <laughs> we can keep looking. All of these traits, all right, so it says shovel teeth over Features and straight, um, circular and hollow hair. 
all these traits were inherited from their from their Chinese ancestors, hence once again Asiatics, which is half their blood, and in most cases the Mongoloid gene dominates the Negroid genes. These American Indians are the children of the true Native Americans who were Negroids as Omex. Yes, the original Native Americans were all Negroid. Let me say that again. Yes, the original Native American tribes were all Negroid. And we showed the American Indians of today are a mix of the Omex, the original blacks, from Negroid roots and who we call the Hushin from China, as well as Dravidians of East India, who crossed the Bering Strait and created the Azulution um, American Indian, related to the Eskimo, a mixture of East Indian and Orientals. All right. These uh, Hishun, uh, Shushin, Mongolians today, known as Chinese, who sailed over here from China in the year 459 A.D. So see, we didn't mix in with them until 459 A.D. And this is where the confusion comes in at. And then, of course, by 1492, we have um, the Spaniards and the Portuguese to, to mix in with the native tribes. And then, of course, later on, we have the Britons. By the 1700s, we have the Britons, the um, Irish, um, Irish, Scottish, to mix in with the Native American tribes. And this is how we get those previous examples of what we sh showed earlier. The East Indians who walked over here much, much later mixed with the Negroid Omex, who, as you know, were originally from Africa, as it has been proven in recent times by much excavation and uncovery along the Nile, that all human life originated in Africa. These ancient Negroids Omex are the parents of the American Indians, and they tell you this. They tell you this. Okay. Um, let's, let's, let's see. All right. Most people, um, don't, uh, who want to run away from the subject, but we're not running. We're running to it. We want to run to it because there's nothing to run away from. This is a mining all right, this is a Mayan, and his name is Hood, um, Jesus, Jesus, and he told us who we were. Hold on, let me go out. For a second, y'all, oh, here it comes. <clears throat> These little machines be hating when you damn get some information going together. But here it is. Let's see. in all over Mexico, mm -hmm. of all the civilizations that they related of the origin of man in America, right. is the old theory that says that over the Bering Strait came groups of people under right. the Atlantic era. Right. But when they got to the right. Gulf of Mexico, right. they find a group of people called Omex. Right. And La Venta. La Venta and San Lorenzo with right. big colossal Tabasco. and Tabasco. Right. The features were not right. were not right. European Asian, as they thought, right. but they were a combined combined features. 
slanted eyes, right. high thick chin bones, right. with wide noses, right. lips, right. foreheads, and curly hair, yeah. very close to the skull. And they said, no. what happened here? Right. Right. There's an old, old speculation that says that the Europeans weren't the first to come to America. Right. We yeah. have evidence of Chinese being in Mexico many yes. years before they, they yes. came. Right. And then we 59 have, AD. And we strongly speculate that the black Egyptians, Jeez. called Nubians, Nubian. great yes. sailors, yes. Yes. great yes. Yes. Say, uh, yes. warriors, could have had, you know, could have had, you know, the ability to do it oppositely. Instead of from this side of Africa over, they went from the other point around, found the current, came over, and many of them came and decided to stay. That's, right. That's where we see the mixture of immigrating groups from up north, mixing with the Nubians, and the result is the Olmecans. That's right. That's right. All right. I mean, case closed. You have a Mayan Indian telling you that the original people that was here were the Omecs <laughs> and then the people who came through the Bering Straits who was known as um, the Xuan people now called the Eskimos and et cetera, et cetera came down and there was mixing in which that occurred and which that produced them as you see from those features Mexico, mix. He goes on further to tell us even more information on the bus. This is our tour guide in 2013. And he's an anthropologist. I think it's wrong. Why for him, but this is where something occurred. Slanted eyes, high thick chin bones, white forehead but white noses, white lips, and curly hair close to the skull like our friends, Afro friends from Africa. What happened here? What happened? How did these people become this way? What occurred in the history of the settlement of this new world that today we still speculate and every day more evidence is being found? But this is simply what happened, senores. When I went to school, because I went to the university to do this, senores, I went to the Autonomous University of Yucatan, and I majored in anthropological sciences and history. I know about you. Plymouth <laughs> Rock, Mayflower, the Pilgrims, uh -oh. Thanksgiving Day is not just to eat turkey. How long? And the 13 colonies, New York should be called New Amsterdam. Wow. More by sea. Red coats are coming, all the years, all the tea parties, Thomas Jefferson, and I think, you know, I think, as a matter of fact, my thesis was on American history. I know about uh, the, uh, Mr. Uh, the first president of the United States of America, Alexander Hamilton, the cause of Delaware with Mr. George Washington to sneak up on the bridge where they were sleeping, remember? Okay. And let me mention to you something, senores. Today, history is being dug out of the ground in all the American continents, proving that long before the Europeans came to America, other people were coming to this world. Yes, yes they were. The more, the more, the more. We have evidence that Chinese were already teaching these indigenous groups of how to make things sparkle from sulfur. We have sulfur mines in Central Mexico. The Spanish properly said that when they got to a city in Mexico City called Cholula, city of Mexico, central Mexico, that they were made, that these people greeted them with fireworks, the sparkles of sulfur. Sulfur. And if the Chinese were here, why not think the following? When I went to school, there's a strong, strong speculation about the origin of the Olmecas that says that the Olmecas were black Egyptians coming over to America. Not the black Egyptians are the Nubians. The Nubians have found their way on the opposite side. We all know that everybody thinks that came from Africa. Yes, sir, that became opposite around. Yes, got to a current of water that washed them into a new world. And as they came, they started to maybe at the beginning commercialize. Yes. That's why in Egypt, tobacco was found among the mummies. How did tobacco get to Egypt? Well, it's only up America. Nubian 
virgin coming, encountering, finding a new world that they were not interested in conquering, but coming and taking back things unknown to them. Maybe some of them stayed and got mixed with these groups that were coming from the Bering Strait. Over in this mixture resulted the Omic civilization. The ones that truly, senores, of all the vast knowledge that we know about these civilizations, I must, I must share with you that in archaeology in Mexico, it is they, the ones that began the skill and knowledge that we know of numerology, astronomy, yes. wow. written languages, yes. organization. Yes. From them, yes. pass it on to others that oh, emerge afterwards. That's right. So we could say that if we could call the great, 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 great grandfathers of all the cultures of Mexico, we would wow. have to say the Olmec. Tabasco. <laughs> and go see in a place called La Venta in San Lorenzo, the colossal head of the Omex. Surprising, wow. you say? Wow. That's How right. can this be? Yeah, and that's what they all say. How can this be that we are the great, great, great grandfathers of all Native American Mayan history and people? Well, this, this has been proven. They tell you that the Olmecs are the mothers and fathers of Western civilization. That's what they'll tell you. So, let's continue on. And see, this is how you're going to have to protect yourself from all the nonsense in which that has been said. So, here. These are several ways to genetically prove which of all the races that make up the human species were on planet Earth first. In an effort to answer this question, scientists did a study on mitochondrial DNA and containing the mitochondrial DNA. We know the real science here. All right? Right here, it says, to confirm the presence of the Native American black race as first on the planet, we would have to consider other genetic evidence. In the disease known as albinism, this is a mutation identified on chromosome number 11, over 11Q14-21, that resulted in a lack of production of tyrannus, or tyrannus, a enzyme necessary for the production of melanin. All right, so we come down, and it says, that production of melanin is also a disruption of not just of the tyrosinus, but also by a lack of copper. So this is how we know that it couldn't be cheese. Because <laughs> remember, copper colored skin. Remember the definition? So copper colored skin is because of copper, literally. <laughs> it's because of copper. Overstand? So, when it says American, a native of America originally applied to the aboriginals are copper colored races. So, for you to be an American, you must have copper. You get it? Because tyrosine or tyrosine S and copper is the reason why they are pale. So they can't be American and they can't be indigenous or aboriginal. <coughs> Technically. And they don't have to shovel teeth. And they can't be Native American, indigenous, aboriginal. Technically. See? These are the shovel teeth. That's what we're talking about here. And most of us is over 50%, meaning that you have at least out of the four, two of these teeth. <coughs> so that means that you will be 50%, at least. And if you have all four, that means that you are damn near 100%. And like I said, at least 90%.
Mm. You don't want you to know that shit. Here go Mars. I took pictures of my shit. <laughs> As you see them shadows, that's the in curves. See? We can prove our shit. So. So we did. This is from My True Ancestry. This is your American Ancestral Map. We have some that came across. This is 1325 AD. This is the time range that they spoke about. We have 200 AD. We have 965 AD. So I got ancestry that was already here. 965 AD. This is before... 1619, you know. Right around. <laughs> 200 AD. Before 1619. 1325 AD. Before 1619. Even in Greenland. 990 AD. Before 1619. As you see here, I have Aztec twice in the blood, and that's 1545, before 1619. And this is all when they claim that we came from where? That allegedly 1619 is, the, is when they claim that 20 odd so Negroes showed up <laughs> in the Americas. They how do I have Aztec? Twice. <laughs> An indigenous American at 965 AD. How is this possible? See, you're not just African. The majority of us are over 50 60, 70, 80 percent to 90 percent or more Native American. And remember, the, the, the uh, requirement was just 25 percent. Remember? Y'all remember that? Remember? I think I did. Um, we show that right here. Every person having one sixteenth or more Negro blood shall be deemed a colored person, and every person not a colored person, meaning um, not just black and white, a mulatto, because that's what they're really talking about. But every person not a colored person having one fourth or more Indian blood shall be deemed an Indian. But God damn it. We got more than one fourth, you know? Hmm. Amazing. So, blood descent and absolute birthright by history of ancient American blood, DNA identity. Oh, yeah. See, see we got to prove this. Upon DNA genetic single nucleotide or polymorphism analyzed or analysis as of 2021, it was found that I possess the same ancient autosomal uh, at DNA genetic markers as found in Native American peoples known as the Pima and the Maya in the lands known today as North and Central America. All right. As well as the Cretaceous, um, Suri, and Punanavi, and the Paco in the lands to, known today as South America. It was also found that I possess the same DNA.
Genetic markers as found in the misnomer Asiatic pygmies, Negritos, and other Southeast Asian peoples in the land known today as the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Burma, and Malaysia. According to the National Geographic's Genographic Project, the Native Americans and Southeast Asians are the earliest groups of people that populated the Americas. They were an earlier group, of course, who was the Omex, as we just went over. And before them. But there are other ancient groups of people as well, such as the Australoids, the Australasians, the Australasians, the Oceans, and misnomer Pacific Negroids, people in the lands known today as Madagascar, Taiwan, um, Australia, New Zealand, New um, Guinea, or Papua New Guinea, uh, Malaysia, Micronesia, and um, Polynesia and other neighboring islands and misnomer African pygmies or Negrillo people such as the Buti and the Biaka in the lands known today as Central Africa and the misnomer Bushmen people such as the Khoisan and the San in the land known today as South Africa. I possess the same ancient Autosome, DNA, genetic markers are found in the misnomer Pacific Negroes, or Negroids, whose skull remains one particular leaf from Lucia, which was found in Brazil, dated approximately 11,500 years before present. And the misnomer Pygmies, Negrito, Negrolos, whose uh, pronatic skull remains were found in Holliston Mills, East Tennessee, Eastern Tennessee, and belonged to a very short statue people, dated at approximately 40,000 years before present. In a Science Daily article, new evidence put man in North America 50,000 years ago, November 18, 2004, by the University of South Carolina, by Dr. Albert Goodyear. All right? Now, we'll get to Dr. Goodyear in a second. But according to the Emperor's Video Tierra, Washington Turner um, guest on El Bay, the Washington are the original inhabitants of what is now named the North Central and South Americas, the German Islands. Therefore, the Washington are not Indians for their lives term. We do not accept the name African American, colored, or Indian, or Negro and Black. We the people of North America are predominantly Washita, the ancient mound builders. We were here thousands of years before the alchemated so-called Indian. The Washita Empire has many descendants. For example, the 12 Shoshunis, or Shoni or Shuni nations, one, Cherokee, Creek, Chickasaw, Choctaw, Seminole, who was known as the five civilized tribes, Blackfoot, Arakawa, Sioux, Kiowa, Mohawk, Cheyenne, Mandan, the Yamasee, and the Arawak. So see, the Arawak are part of the Washington Empire. So when we asked about the Trinidad, Tobago, uh, when we asked about Puerto Rico, when we asked about Jamaica, we asked about uh, the Bahamas, all of us that come and have ancestry from those areas, we are the Arawak, the Carib Arawak Indians, as they refer to us as, or Tiano Indians. But really, we're talking about the Washita Empire. So here you also have the Lumbee, Montauk, who was just with the Montauk slash sister tribe, which was the Shinnecock up in New York this past weekend. The Nanakoke Moors, the Lenape, Ben Ishmael, the Melungeons, the Mohicans, the Comanche, Nice Piers, the Nechi, the Pani, Wacho, Tuscarora, all right, the Katawa, Kat uh, uh, the Micmac, the Osage, the Genesee, um, the Manapani, which is also um, 
the Sapani, um, tribe, the Pohantan, um, the Wapanog, and many, many other tribal nations. The fact of this rings true in the Treaty of Camp Holmes. Read the treaty with the Comanche and the Wichita Indians and the associated bands for the purpose of establishing, perpetu- uh, perpetuating peace and friendship between the United States of America and the Comanche and the Wichita nations. So when you have many nations that come together, they formed the empire. So who was part of these these nations that came together, these Wichita nations, Wichita nations, and the associated bands, the tribes of Indians? They are the Cherokee, Muscogee, Choctaw, which is the Creek, the Choctaw, the Osage, the Seneca, and the Quapa, all right, or tribes of Indians, all right, all of these tribal Nations together were in all the remnants of the empire Washington deduct the money All right So as you see here Welcome Osario Lane to Tupac L Bay And we go down and we see um, The Murray Indian And out of the 22 um, Chromosomes We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 9 out of the 22 chromosomes we find specifically with Native American ancestry. All right? And this we call it with the fact of F99919 Covis, Montana, dating back to 12,500 years ago. KY means thousand, means thousand, all right? KY means thousand. So this is 12,500. Or 12.5 thousand years ago. And as you see, the lines for the COVID is very orange. Meaning that I definitely had ancestry here 12,000.5 or 12.5 thousand years ago from the COVID Montana. Now, the COVID Montana, all right? Now, they don't have nothing on this map that dates back that far. However, this is why you take multiple tests, because t- each test tells you more and more about yourself. So here, I also have the Kennewick, United States, which dates back 8,000, uh, 8. 3,000 years ago. And as you see, there are also orange lines here. Not as many as the COVID, which dates back to 12.5, but they were still mixed in with those who came 4,000 years later, uh, who was connected to the Kennewick. All right? But as you see here, Lumbee derived. I am. Puerto Rican. Well, hold up. Puerto Rican, actually, Tejano, which is Carib and Arawak derived. Miwok derived. Mexican derived. Well, hold up. Mexican derived because, remember, we just showed you that it did say Aztec twice. Aztec. So Mayan and Aztec derived. All right? And Miwok, which are the Mexican ancestry that is within California, derived. So this is what this is showing with the 965 AD. Very close to California there. So these are the connections. Ancestry, my ancestry. So, here it is. We just said 12,000 or 12.5 thousand years ago, the Covis, Montana. And we have Naya, the 13,000 year old Native American. All right. The 1996 discovery of the 9,000-year-old remains of a hunter known as Kennewick Man near the Washington-Oregon border presented an intriguing puzzle to the archaeologists studying the people in the Americas. While he was clearly an early American, he had a large skull and a narrow um, face that projected further forth than those of modern Negro um, um, Native Americans. All right? In other words... He looked more Negro. These physical discrepancies led scientists to question whether he was a direct ancestor of modern Native Americans or a different group of people migrating to the Americas and gave rise to them. 
as question might have been found in the 150 year old deep water fill um, trench known as Hayo Negro, the black hole. You see, they got to get the Negro in there to tell you the truth about who the Kenwick man was. <laughs> in an underwater cave system in Mexico, Yucatan. Same place with the, amazingly, with the Omex and their descendants still dwell. All the way down is to Guerrero. There in 2007, Divers found the nearly intact skeleton of a 15, 16 year old girl they call Naya for the great water nymph. All right, so, so you know, so she, she's a nymph. You know what we used to say back in the days with that, so this is what they're trying to say, trying to give it a uh, sexual connotation. This year, scientists announced what Naya remains revealed. Well, what did it reveal? Multiple methods used to date her teeth. And bones suggest that she lived between 12,000 to 13,000 years ago. Now, why would they say the teeth specifically? Because we just mentioned the teeth. You see? She had them show teeth. That's one of your ancestors. And bones suggest that she lived 12,000 to 13,000 years ago. Well, hold on. What did it just say? In Covis, Montana, I have a lot of DNA of 12. Point five thousand years ago. And I'm pretty sure you won't find the same thing in yours. Okay? Analysis of her mitochondrial DNA, which is passed from mother to child, shows that she has a constellation of genes that are common among moderate Native Americans. Her skull construction is also similar to that of the Kennewick man. Yeah, she is a Negro. Of course, the European didn't go on planet Earth until 6,000 years ago. And the Asians, in the way that they look now, didn't happen until 4,000 years ago. So who was here before 4,000 to 6,000 years ago? There was only one people on the planet. Ta-da! She has the physical characteristics we expect to see in Paleo-Americans. Remember, we are the Paleo-Americans. The genetics say that she and modern Native Americans share ancestry, of course. You get these out there and show the teeth in your mouth, don't you? <laughs> Said James Chatter, an archaeologist who has studied both Naya and the Kennewick Man. These two ancient Americans and modern Native Americans can likely all trace their heritage back to the same source population. So how come I can trace my heritage back to 12.5 thousand years ago to her specifically, to Naya? As you see here, that's who DNA this is. This is the DNA that they use. The Covis. Montana. Huh? Hmm? It's all connected. That's what I'm trying to say. These two ancient Americans and moderate Native Americans can likely all trace their heritage back to the same source population, a group that is thought to have been isolated for thousands of years in the Bering Strait or Beringia, the landmass that once connected Asia to America. Researchers now believe that the adaptation over the past 13,000 years in the Americas produced changes in appearance, leading to the features we commonly see today in Native Americans. Among today's Native Americans. So, this is Lucia. This is also Naya. All right, this is Lucia particularly. So, Lucia woman is the nickname given to a nearly 12,000 year old skeleton, the oldest human fossil found in the Americas. All right, so not only are we connected to the Kennewick man, we're connected to Lucia as well as Naya. This is Naya here to the left, right? But this is the face that they gave Lucia. Now, they had to show that she's the Paleo-Indian or Paleo-American. But look at her. Look at her hair. She got these little twist joints. Look at her hair. Look at her facial features. 
So Lucia, which dates back to 12,000 years ago, which is the same time as we just seen here, Covis, Montana, 12,000 12 years ago. The European wasn't even in liquid form yet. He wasn't even born on the planet. He wasn't even here. So this is why they had to go back and show you the oldest fossils. They have to put dark skin on them because they know this is the only truth there is. It was given to a nearly 12,000-year-old skeleton, the oldest human fossil found in America. It was found in 1975 at Lapa um, Vanilla, Brazil. This year, woman was a Paleo-Indian woman from the Paleolithic period, and some archaeologists believe she was among the first wave of immigrants to South America. So you see, so here, uh, 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 we did the mitochondrial DNA, and it says maternal haplogroup. It says you share an ancient maternal lineage with Naya, a paleo American girl from the Yucatan. I do. It says that's that's my that's maternal haplogroup, yo. This is. Paternal haplogroup. You share a paternal haplogroup with the ancient one, a 9,000 year old man from the Pacific Northwest. Uh oh, that's the Kennewick man. So I share ancestry with both of them, as you see here within my chart. Covis, Montana, Kennewick, United States. So, when someone say that we're not indigenous, God damn, how much more do you have to prove? Huh? So, we are the Indian Americans, i.e. the First Nation, the original, said aboriginal people of the Americas. I'm going to say that again. We are the Paleo Americans, i.e. the First Nation. So, you had all these Native Americans talking about they're the First Nation of what? We're not. The original said Aboriginal people of the Americas. That's us. This is our flag of the Empire Washington D. The Dominion. Go ahead, Brother L. What'd you get ready, sir? Yeah, have you, have you seen on the YouTube uh, this uh, man named uh, Pale, uh, Pale Skin looking uh, dude, his uh, Premio Ow? Yeah, uh, doing some on the Washita, the First World Order. Yeah, that's 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 why I'm destroying the mythology. Okay. Did you see it, Brother Al? He said he was uh, uh the First World Order. He had uh, your book. Uh huh. Uh, doing a thing on the Washita. Right, right. Did you see it? But he, but he, but he always talking against Moors though. So uh huh. Not indigenous to America. They not. So what is he, what what is he doing with your book? Uh, I don't know how you say that when he speaks about the Moors often, and he said that we are Moors. So I heard him also say that. So I don't know what he's getting ready to do, but that's why I'm doing what I'm doing to destroy any mythology. Because uh -huh. I know my information is 100 percent accurate. Uh huh. So we be saying the same thing you saying. So he he will have to if he's smart. <laughs> so what is he? I mean, you know, oh, is he changing his mind now, or what? You know, I don't know, but I'm getting ready to um, prove it. That's why I'm doing this um, information here. This is proof time, genetic time. This is why I can prove what I can prove because this is research. A picture says a thousand words. If you see America, and who is at the helm of America is the Moabite, the Moabites, the so-called black woman. So the empress came in the image of this matriarchal society, as we once were. And this book was written in the 1600s and cost at one time $58,000. Mm. But here's the empress coming in the image and after the likeness of... America, as you see here above her name, above her, I uh, should say, as you see above her. That's what America looked like. 
And this is from the book of Malachi, which I have several copies of. Mm -hmm. So, this is the Empress' granddaughter, Wendy Washington, as you see here to the left. And this is the Empress' son, Joe Frederick Washington, or Joseph Frederick Washington, known as King King Joe, and you have Empress Wendy. Now, if you see right behind King Joe, you will see the Biloxi Indians, as they also refer to as, but now they are known as the Washington Nation. Yeah, Washington Nation, Mardi Gras. Indians. All right. Joe holding up the flag. Picture of the flag. So this is a book we need to get the lost treasures of King Juba. The evidence of Africans in America before Columbus by Frank Joseph. Actual evidence of their decision to abandon their refuge survived among the numerous insignificant population of native blacks known today as the Washita. They were described as an indigenous people by the renowned explorer Lewis and Clark in 1797. Four years later, the Washita, a sovereign nation, was distinguished from the region Indian tribes and were officially exempt from the Louisiana Purchase. In 1995, the Economic Social Council of the United Nations officially recognized the Washington black indigenous pre-Columbian identity. Indeed, the present Washington leader, Riyasi Tierra, has been told as a child that her ancestors were not brought over to America as slaves, but instead arrived as free men and women many centuries earlier. Their oral tradition has been passed down from her grandmother and from her grandmother before her, and so forth over the course of numerous generations. Now, we are the Washita, the indigenous black inhabitants of North America, the suppressed story of the ancient ones, the original black mound builders, inhabitants of North America, compiled under the direction of the Empress of the Washita, Empress Vodiasi Tierra Washita Turnica, Gaston L. Bay. And here in the book by R. A. Umar Shabazz Bay, um, he shows um the Delona River, all right, south of Gramble State University is the remnants of the ancient Didagdemonia or Dida um de River. And as you see here, the mound. So here we go to the tribes of the Mardi Gras Indian nations. If you go here to what is highlighted, what does it say? Washington Nation. So, tribe of the Mardi Gras Indian Nation. And you have Washington Nation. All right? Washington Nation, Mardi Gras Indians. Perform. This is Big Chief Montana. He passed... Alay salam upon him. Washita. Even the Bahamians are indigenous to Americas. They have the same ritual as we found here with Big Chief Montana. They have it within the Bahamas, what is called the Junk Canoe. Originated in America, not Africa. Check out the on customs similarities, remembering Big Chief Tootie, Montana. You see here, holding up a sign saying, Washington Nation. This is for people who claim that Washington Nation does not exist. No, we're not state and federally recognized. And don't have to be because we actually have land grants in which that shows ties to this land. Unlike any other Native unlike any other Native American <coughs> right, we can show 
land rights. So therefore, we don't have to receive funding from the government and have to lie about our heritage because I already destroyed that shit to begin with. But as you see here, Washington Nation to the left. As you see here to the right, Washington Nation. As you see here with the jacket, Washington Nation, Mighty Gras Indians. Washington Nation. This is you. So right here, return of the ancient ones by the empress. This is what she states. Because we have some who say that we're not moors. Well, the empress should have dead dead. She said, own personal research regarding your Moorish history and then allow your mind to connect the two. So why he said, let not that push you into wishful thinking, but just as the suggestion, this book begs you to start asking questions and do your own personal research regarding your Moorish history. Now, this is what the empress state that that's what we're supposed to be doing with her book, The Return of the Ancient Ones. Says so my people were here when the white man came to this um, um, African America. All right? Continent. They were the Moors. Or Moors. In late years called the Moors. From the land of Tadamor. Or Palmora. All right? Or Portuguese. These were the people from the Mu. Or Tadamor. Or Tadamorian. Or Tad and Mu. Black and Moor. A black man came from a black woman. All men came from a black woman. No man, black or white, to my knowledge, has ever given birth. Palamores is actually Pal and Mori. Together you get an ancient brown or dirt colored people. Paleo, as you know, being a Paleo Americans, Paleo is, means ancient or primitive, excuse me, primitive or ancient. All right? Now, I don't like the word paleo because the, for, the root of it is pale. <laughs> Even at the pale Americans. All right? So we're just going to simply say ancient Americans. As the emperors already told us, the ancient ones. We are the ancient ones. She also used the word aborigines. So people who want to say that we're not aboriginal, or you have those who are now Aboriginal saying that we're not Moors. The Empress used it all. So she was holistic, and we are holistic as Washington. We are the Aborigines, or as Lewis and Clark calls us, the black and brown, bushy headed original inhabitants of North America. The Washington and Turnica families carries the imperial bloodline. A lot of us is from this imperial bloodline. So the Europeans took control of our lives and forced us to take on the names Washington and Turner. But it is derived from Washington and Turnica. Now all of these people are black. Now check this out. Now all of these people were black aborigines. The Washington nation included the Washa, the Chactos, and several more tribes. These people were small and were the Choctaws. The Choctaw and the Turnica were all black. If the intent was to take the land, the last thing I know that the white man would have done was make it known fact that they were black. Yet they have alluded to it between the lines by using words like aborigines, not being white or red, because there's never been a white man who called an aborigine. <laughs> Notice also the distance that we are talking about. One family owned the entire Washita. Whether you spelled it Wichita, Washita, Washita, Upper Saw, Arkansas, Kansas, or Washa, it is still a black nation of chocolate brown people or copper colored people who were counted as three-fifth person along with all other blacks in the San Louisiana Purchase, and no deal was ever cut except to, in other words, no deal was ever cut within the, 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 um, the still our land to even create what is called the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. 
That never happened. That was a fortunate land deal, as they have always done fraud. Except to hang, rape, murder, poison, and to steal our land. The Imperial Empire watched over the dominion. The Washington Nation of Moors or any indigenous people of North America, the Washington, otherwise known as the Omex, have been originally associated with the Washington. Accordingly, the Washington has been the primary group of more general population of indigenous people identified in history as a Moors or a Moors. Known to the Spanish and the French, the Washington have come to be known to the English as a Adena Hotwellian people identified with a Punic I, Iberian affinity maintaining an Aleutian um, Carthaginian heritage, as well as the Washer has been associated with the Eastern Algonquin Native Americans, having acquired an ancient Egyptian as well as Punic script and vocabulary, and they have appeared in the epigraphic records of North America. Now, this is coming from Professor Ravana Bay, the Washington. The Washington Nation of Moors, a historical synopsis. So, the Washo were a Negro tribe living above the New Orleans Bayou. And this is who we just showed you. The people from the New Orleans Bayou, these are the people who's holding the sign Washington Nation. These are the people, right? These are the ancestors of those who was living upon there. No, see, when we um, dancing and singing, they fine with that. They fine with us shuffling and jiving. They fine with that. <laughs> but see, we get political. Oh, nigga, you don't exist. But as long as we dancing and singing, oh, you the Washington Nation of Indian, of Mardi Gras Indians. <laughs> The Washoe was a Negro tribe living above the New Orleans Bayou. It has been said that the Washoe mixed in with the Mali Moors and produced the Yamasee. See, the Yamasee were our priesthood of the Washoe. The Yamasee or the Yamasee or the Yamashiach. In other words, the Messiahs, the messengers. That's why they picked up the banner in order to do the fighting against the Albion. That's why you hear about the Yamasee Wars and their remnants, the Creek and the Seminole fighting from 1715 to 1858. We fought. We fought. Yamasee is the mother tribe of the Creek, Seminole, just so that means that the Yamasee mother is Washita, the Washo. And they are the mother tribes of the Creek, the Seminoles, the Apache, um, um, Apache, uh, um, Alapache, um, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Catawba, Cherokee, as well as many other tribes. In the 1700s, the British, French, and Spanish mixed into many of these tribes. See, as I told you earlier, I told you what happened in the 1700s. The British, the French, and the Spanish. In 1715, the Yamasee rose in rebellion against the English and aligned ally, and ally with the Spanish or Spaniards, of course, because they look Moorish. Some of the Yamasee Creek migrated to what is now known as Savannah, Georgia. In fact, you can go down towards Savannah, Georgia, um, Georgia, and the town right above near Savannah, Georgia, is Yamasee. The town of Yamasee. It became outlaws under the tribal name of Yamakra. When the British began taking women and children into slavery, many black Native American men mixed in with the runaway African slaves. A war broke out between the Yamasee and the British in 17, oh, 1715, the Yamasee Uprising. And throughout the 1700s, many tribes were slaughtered. Remnants of these tribes banded together created an alliance. These newly formed tribes of Yamasee is Kosa, Chowan, and the Congri, who known as the Catawba. The Catawba spoke a dialect of the ancient Kushite language 
which was bits and pieces of the original Olmec African language. The Kadaba lived in South Carolina. So hey, yeah. get this book, A History of the African Olmecs, A Black Civilization of Americas from Prehistoric Times to the Present Era. Now understand is that when we go back and we look, they tell you that they refer to the Olmecs as Indians. Just put it into your search engine, the Olmec Indians, and watch what pulls out. All right. Now, understand, when you put that in, you will see many articles on the Omex, and they refer to the Omex as Indians. So even though they claim that the Omex came from Africa, but because they was here before the Albion came here, they too was referred to as Indians. Just as the Moors was referred to as Indians. You have to know this because the Lilapi referred to themselves as Moors. But yet they are called today Indians. The Nanakos referred to themselves as Moors. But yet today they are referred to as Indians. The Yamasees refer to themselves as Moors, but yet today they are called Indians. In fact, the Delaware Indians, you can still find online, if you pull it up, they refer to as the Delaware Moors. So where does this shit come from that we're not Moors? Right here, among the other black nations who existed in the Americas before Columbus and long before Christ was the Yamasee Indians, who had a large kingdom in the southeastern United States. Their descendants are among the first blacks of pre-Columbian Americans' or, um, origins to fall victim to kidnapping for the purpose of enslavement. The descendants of the Yamasees are the millions of blacks who live in Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and northern Florida. Hmm. Read this book, Carolina Genesis Beyond the Color Line by Scott Withrow. The Yamasee Indians, or Yamasee, also referred to as the Omo Kari Kankin Kakin, the Omo Karis, and Amerikadio. Amerikadio. Now, the Amer, Cardio, is the name in which that the Yamasees had because it was after America. They were listed among the 19 tribes. Somebody move your background, please. They were listed among the 19 tribes as being of dark complexion, found scattered, widely scattered, among the inhabitants of North and South America. They were assumed to be immigrants from Africa prior to the European discovery of America, whom Lucas Viquez de Alion persisted in slave hunting in Beaufort, South Carolina in 1520. Now, this was 100 years before they claimed the Africans came on a slave ship, that they were Africans on a slave ship. So they had to admit that they, uh, uh, that they already thought 100 years before 1619, before the so-called slave trade began, the European slave trade, that is, Albion slave trade, allegedly, that we already was in Beaufort, South Carolina, and they was already hunting, um, hunting us um, um, to be slaves to them. Albion referred to the Ramsey as Negroes being valuable laborers. But, so, so they referred to us as Negroes in 1520, 100 years before the so-called Africans came here. But they say that they were assumed to be immigrants from Africa prior to the European discovery of America. Yeah, a whole fucking 100 years. 
Yamasi, Yama is the name of the Aspen brothers or the Eastern Hebrews. That's who the Yamasees are. The Hebrews, meaning they have E1B1A blood and are indigenous. The Hebrew Creek language of Yamasee was thought ex extinct. The most influential Native American natives or nation has resurrected. The Yamasee Native Americans last seen in northern Florida has returned. Being called one of the bloodiest wars of the Creek and Muscogee people of the Yamasee Wars in 1715. The Yamasees, which history shows, is comprised of the... Check this out now. The Yamasee history shows and they're comprised. So who are the Yamasee? Check this out. They're telling you they are conglomerates. They are a white, a conglomerate. They are confederacy. So when you say that you're Yamasee, no, you're saying that you are part of all of these. What is Gale, Tama, Uchi, Cherokee, Wichita, which is Washita, Creek, and more? As described by the governor of South Carolina, Craven, he made claims of all of the tribes in that region was Yamasee. The governor of South Carolina said that? Which would explain why they had so many towns and villages over the United States. But that conversation is for a later time. But God damn it, I don't want to say it for a later time. That's what the hell is going on. Go get the book, Old World Roots of the Cherokee. How DNA, ancient alphabets, and religion explains the origin of America's largest Indian nation by Donald Yates. Well, hold up. <coughs> they say we're not Moors. We're not in the past five or six years, most of what you have heard about the DNA study that shows the founding of Native American DNA around the Great Lakes, matching the DNA of Safari Jews, near Israel, and other areas. Yeah, because they're the real Hebrews. The links of these articles are at the very end of this block. The connection between the Native Americans and the Jews have also been discussed in length here and in the um, anecdote book of Mormons. The book of Mormons itself talks about the connection. All right, in D and C, 1926-27, which says, and again, I command that thou shalt not covet thy own property, but impart it freely to the printing of the Book of Mormons, which contains the truth and the works of God, which is my words to the Gentiles, that soon it may go to the Jews, of whom the um, Lamanites are remnants, that they may believe the gospel and look not for a Messiah to come who already come. Who has already come. So it says the Cherokee are an important connection between the old world and the new world. There are many names that the Cherokee are related to. Hmm. Phoenician, number one. I believe Prophet Noble Dryly spoke about the Phoenicians. Oh, he definitely spoke about number two, the Moors. Number three, the Berbers, the Puric. In which that we spoke about, which was part of the Puric script, in which that was derived from the Washita. And we just finished breaking down from Ravana Bay. The Canaanites, the Jewish or Jews, Hebrews, Israelites, the last one that is, the Melangians, the Carthaginians, the Turks, the Greeks, the Mesopotamians, the Egyptians. Oh, well, we know. Remember, we just had Jose, uh, um, um, Jose excuse me, to, to tell us that the Omans were the living Egyptians. So. That means that they're related to the living Egyptians? Yeah, the Egyptians. Yeah, the Cherokees related to them. The real ones. Not those ones in which that we just showed were just 3.1% and less. Who's chiefs? And no teeth in their mouth. <laughs> North American, Manicots. Well, hold up. All of the indigenous people say that their grandfather to them is the Manicots, and the Manicots refer to themselves as Moors. So what else could they be but Moors? They believe look up Manicots. N-A-N-T-I-C-O-K-E-S. Guineas, Cubans, Portuguese. This is the heritage or this mixed heritage of the Cherokee. So when you say that you Cherokee and you have the mixed heritage of all of this in your blood, that's what you're saying. Hell, I got all of this in our blood. 
The Phoenicians, the Moors, definitely the Berbers, the Punic, the Canaanites, the Hebrew Israelite, the Melungeons, the Carthaginian, the Turks, the Greek, the Mesopotamian, the Egyptians, the North um, Africans, the Nanocotes, the Guineans, the um, Cubans, the Portuguese. I got all of that. Hell, I'm Cherokee. That's one of the indigenous tribes. One. Right here, from a federal depository of New York State, in the handbook of North American Indians, page 290, it says, they are among the reputed ancestors of the Aboriginal American Indian population natives or Maoris and Turks. Right? It says, the reputed ancestors of the Aboriginal American Indian population natives or Maoris and Turks. Well, I think we were just told that as in the book, Old World Roots of the Cherokee. You see Boers and you see Turks. See, these were the Turks. <laughs> see, they didn't tell you that though. So this is Kajar. And uh, that's so called black man, it's called a scepter. This is a ruling scepter. This is one of the types of the Ottoman Empire, which actually is the Moorish Empire. From 1299 AD to November 1, 1922. So we just lost our indigenous ship. As we know, by 1956, President Dwight Eisenhower abolished AA triple two one four one. So these are the lands that we as the Turks, as you see here, he's one of the rulers with his scepter. Look at the areas that we controlled. Albania, Algeria. Arabia, Armenia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, um, Bulgaria, Cyprus, Egypt, Istria, which is was part of um, Ethiopia um, at one time, Greece, Hungary, Iraq, Kosovo, Libya, Macedonia, Montenegro. Well, you see, they go with the word Negro. We know we be there. Serbia, Syria, Tunisia, the Ukraine, uh oh, Lebanon, Palestine, Jordan. All of these areas here. That was the Ottoman Empire. That was part of the Moorish Empire in the east that we controlled as well as here in the west did the book by Clyde Winters, Dr. Clyde Winters we are, are not just Africans the black Native Americans what does he say? He said we are not just Africans is the title of my book because Afro-Americans are more than descendants of Sub-Saharan Africans we have been lied to about black history our ancestors including black Europeans and black Native Americans. When I was growing up, my mother made it clear that we was part Choctaw. So in 1968 and 1969, I took a survey at my school, the Saba, in Chicago, and found that over 40% of my classmates had Indian heritage. 40%. So we go here to revisiting the Delaware Moors. Told you. <laughs> it's over the 26, 2016. I was a teenager when I first heard someone use the term more to refer to a member of the Central um, Sixth County multiracial community which claims and celebrates Native American ancestry. They do? More. I asked, confused, thinking of Northern Africa. This is the problem that they all have. 
What that mean? That was, check this out. The response was quick like a punchline. More nigga than anything. So get the book, Delaware's Forgotten Folk. The Story of the Lies and Nanocoats. By, say, by um, C.A. Um, Westlager. I didn't know at the time, but C.A. Westlager had mentioned a similar tongue-in-cheek explanation of the odd label in his book, Delaware Forgotten Folks, The Story of the Moors and Nanocoats. All right? Published in 1943. During the era of segregation, such a remark was not only a cruel joke, but relegated to target the second-class com- colored community. Since before the Civil War, Delawareans who claim Indian heritage has been accused by both white and blacks, accused by both black and white and black of being nothing more than a black seeking special treatment. And see, this is what is going on. They still think that that's what, that is, what is going on. We don't want special treatment. We just want to be left the fuck alone so we can build. Do you need no special treatment for you? We're not seeking state and federal recognition. And never will we do so. But the local term more in ethnic label doesn't seem to have originated as a racial slur. Exactly, it did. In fact, the so-called Delaware Moors identified themselves as Moors as early as the 19th century, if not earlier. Mm. Wow. As I said. So, if they want to say that we as so-called Washington, that we're not Moors, then why do the Delaware Moors or Delaware Indians use the term Moors, such as the Nanakos, the Lenny Lenape, and so forth and so on? All right. Um, let me um, let me see. Um, yes, this um, this site that can show you a percentage of bloodline lineage of certain, not of everything, not of everything. All right, but it can show you some information. I gave you the the um, the gist of everything. So we have both medical and the Moore's folk medicines, the Delaware Shoshone, the Silica. Um, the Mohicans and other Eastern Indians claim that their forebearers, the forebears originally arrived at knowledge of Mantan Pasican from a tribe called the Nanocotes. The Nanocotes, the Nanocotes and Moore's Folk Medicine by C.A. Westlager, he spoke about the aboriginals who called themselves Moors and Nanocotes. Hold up. Let's say that again. The aboriginals who called themselves Moors and Manicotes. Hmm. Okay. Let that sink in for all the people who are saying that we're now Moors. I've destroyed this shit over a hundred times before. The Lily Lenape, Delaware. The Lily Lenape. One theory is that they are of the Moorish race. And their ancestors were Spanish Moors, wrecked on the coast more than a century ago. Another tradition represents them as descendants of the Nanako Indians. This is who the Delaware Moors are, the Lenny Lenape. Right? They say these people are usually swarthy, means black, black haired, and black eyed, though some of a fair complexion. And if someone was out of a fair complexion, there was who we call red bone and high yellow. And we still have them today. They are mostly farmers and they had their own school distinct from the general public school system and they're associated neither with whites nor with blacks. Because blacks wanted to come up under the artificial um, title or label. So they wasn't going for that shit. They wasn't going with being called black and it has no ethnicity, has no nationality. Black is an object. They wouldn't go for that. So they said, well, 
we know the Negroes out there so they can do that black thing. So with the books, Return of the Ancient Ones, with the Washita, and my book, The First World Order. These three particular books speak specifically about our Washita heritage. Interview of the Washita um, by um, Shabazz, Brother Umar Shabazz Bay. It says, other names used to divide indigenous people are Creek, Cherokee, Hopi, Iroquois, um, um, Anas, um, Sassi, Anansi, Anansi, uh, Adina, Hokan, Hotwell, Hopewell, Mes- um, Mississippian, Micmacs, Moors, Mayanka, Mohawk, um, Mia, Mura, Maraca, um, Umatilla, Uka, or Yuka, um, Supe, Navajo, Kohatan, uh, uh, Kodo, Comanche, Cheyenne, Shuni, Shoni, um, Shoni, Shuan, uh, Kawasha, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, all right, Apache, Algonquin, um, Pesca, Gola, Natchez, Biloxi, um, Humisa, Seminole, Cher- um, Chickasaw, Choctaw, etc. We are the indigenous, not Indians. By accepting the misleading label Indian, the origin of some of our people was psychologically removed from this land to India, Asia. The culture of the Olmecs, Toltecs, Mayans, Aztecs, and Incas were evolved into sophisticated societies in the areas known as Central and South America. No. Can all be linked to the distinct traditions and artifacts originally in the Washington de Dr. Maya Empire? So we're not Moors, then why do we have an American Indian list? Check this out now. Greetings to all. Per the United States Department of Commerce, Bureau of Census, Moors are classified as an American Indian tribe. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. We got 465 here, we know also a 667 code. And look what's above Moors, Lundi, Halawa, um, Sapani tribe, the Kortan, the Chahari, all these are North Carolina tribes. Mm. Deep. So the Moors of the Americas are the Aboriginal Americans. Uh, Aboriginal Americans. Okay? Simple. One more time. The Moors of the Americas are the Aboriginal Americans. Simple. Get the, get the books. The American is the true old world, moon discovered, and the promised land, volume one and two, by Amun Hotep, um, Chavez Al Bay. Right? Another book, Pictorial History of America, Northern and Southern Portions of the New World, by S.G. Goodrich. All right, so if you don't believe us on how the people looked, he tells you. All right? The red, brown, and black men of America and Australia and their white supplanters. Damn. He just went right in, didn't he? This is 1890. G.T. Um, Bettany. Okay. Inquiry into the distinctive characteristics of the Aboriginal race of America. By Samuel George Morton. Well, what do he say? It is my chiefly intent to produce a few of the most strikingly characteristic traits of these people to sustain the position that all the American nations, all American nations, except the Eskimo, are one and the same race. 
one or one race, and that these race is peculiar and distinct from all others, or possess alike the long black hair, the brown to cinnamon colored skin, the heavy brow, the dull and sleepy eye, the full and compressed lips, and the solace but um, dilated nose. These traits, moreover, are equally common to the savage and civilized nations. Whether they inhabited the margins of rivers and feed on fish, or rove the forests and, and substance on spurs of chase, it cannot be questioned that physical um, diverse, um, diverse um, diversities do occur. Equally singular and impeccable. As seen in different shades of color, varying from a fair tint to a complexion almost black. And this, too, under circumstances in which climate has little or no influence. So, also in reference to statue, the differences are, re are remarkable in entire tribes, which, moreover, are geographically proximate to each other. These facts, however, are more acceptance to a general rule and do not alter the peculiar physiognomy um, nominee, um, nominee of the Indian, which is as undeviatingly um, characteristics of that of the Negro. Hold up. What did he say? He says the peculiar physical nominee, nominee of the Indians, which is as undeviatingly characteristics as that of the Negro. So he's saying the Indians look like Negroes, right or wrong. For whether we see him in the athletic carrot or the stunt cannon in the dark Californians or the fair Bogua, he is an Indian still and cannot be mistaken for being of any other race. So you say that the Negro can't be mistaken for any other race. These are the ones who, uh, 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 for the so-called remedy, claim that they brought us over here. But in 1842, he's writing this to the Boston Society of Natural History. And this is before slavery ended. So he's saying that all the free Moors, the free Negroes, are Indians. Now, this is Herbert Howe Bancroft in his book, The Native Races of the Pacific States of North America, wrote that the complexion of the native race of the Pacific or as being dark skinned, dark brown, really black. And or Negro. All right. This is what he states in here. All right. And I'm just going to read a few of them. Um, he basically said the same thing that um, the other guy just said. Their complexion is much darker than that of the tribes from the north, often being only black, so that with their mutton uh, ratted bushy hair, which is frequently cut short. They represent an uncouth appearance. Well, you know, that's how we look nowadays with dreadlocks and, you know, matted hair, you know, of the rosters and so forth, so on, and those who follow after the roster traditions with the hair. It looks uncouth. That's how he says it. Okay, but, but look, look at his beard and shit. I mean, really, he, he, he's the last one to talk about that. Anyway, at Bodega, um, they, they are an ugly and brutish race, really with Negro profiles. Their complexion is dark uh, mahogany and also nearly black. Their face is round and square with um, features approximating nearer to the African than to the Indian. On the um, Sacramento were fine robust men with low statues and badly formed. Their mouth was very large and their nose broad and depressed, chiefly distinguished by their dark skin. Their features, of course, broad and of a dark chocolate color. 
Ugly, stupid, and savage. You see how they feel about us? Otherwise, they are well for taller, brutal, and of a dark brown complexion. The women are short and very ugly. They have much of the Negro in their counties. They are... They also have a very savage look and are very dark color. At South, um, at Santa Clara, they are of a blackish color. They have flat face, thick lips, and black, coarse straight hair. At the Placerville, they are also most repulsive, repulsive um, looking wrenches. They are near, nearly black and are excessively ugly. See, this is what they keep saying over and over again. Just notice this. This is 1874. All right? Speaking of the California Indians in general, they are of a, a middle end, or rather of a low stature and of a dark brown color, approaching black, large projecting lips and broad flat nose, Negro in appearance. All right? Just take out all the ugly um, statements. Okay, because they remember they was building their white supremacy at this time period. The primitive black nations of America. So, if the so-called pale Indians, as they look now, the five-dollar fake Indians, how they look now, um, can say to us that we're not native, but yet. This man was written in 1832. Who's writing this in 1832? All right, Professor Constantine Rasenik stated that there were so-called black nations here in North, Central, and South America before the arrival of Europeans. Notice this was during the time of the so-called slavery, 1832. So who is he talking about? He said the primitive black nations of America. But I thought they brought all of us over here. So why in the hell is he writing this shit in 1832? That a European professor, Constantine Ruffini, writes about so-called blacks being nations here in the Americas. So we did have nations. And we was in the Americas. The plot thickens. <laughs> the Society of Giraffe haven't offered an award for the best memoir on the origin of the Asiatic Negroes. I sent them last year two memoirs. One of this Asiatic Negro wherein I demonstrated the affinities of their languages with the African and the Polynesian Negroes, as well as with the Hindus and Chinese, and rendered it probable that all the Negroes originated in the southern slope of the what? Himalaya. Mountains, as they did once exist all over India, South China, Japan, Persia, and Arabia. My second memoir was on the Negroes or black nations found in America before Columbus, which I proved. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Where are these, these good uh, 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 professors at nowadays? Where are these good Albion professors at nowadays? Or these fake five dollar Indians teaching on Native American history, where, where are they at telling this truth like this like Professor Constantine Rafael did in eighteen thirty two? Where are they at? <laughs> they stay in the black damn birthday, that's where they are. <laughs> And they don't got them damn teeth. Africans don't have these damn teeth. So we know they didn't buy us off for the fucking years ago. We get it? We are the Paleo Americans. Professor Constantine tells us about who we found here. Oh, go ahead, brother. I said that's just about something at all, man. You know, just, uh, just, uh, I, I, I know the Aboriginal American, especially not Moors. You know, another one with that Mohawk uh, hairstyle. 
I haven't seen them in a while. Well, I prove, I prove holistically that we are all of it and more, as I always do, because they're not holistic in their thinking and knowing their research. This is why they try to supplicate um, uh, and, and, and upsert um, and separate the information because they're left hemisphere thinkers. Uh-huh. See, when you're left hemisphere thinkers, you think of nothing more than breaking shit up and apart. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, yeah, I meant to tell you too, Brother L. Um, your, your constant coughing means that you got a um, calcium deficiency, God. I got a what now? Calcium deficiency. You need more calcium. I don't get enough calcium? Okay. Right. Like, you're not getting enough calcium. Okay, I'll work on that then. Mm-hmm. And um, I will add magnesium to it. Magnesium? Okay. Mm-hmm. Liquid. Make sure it's liquid. Okay. All right, so hey, tomorrow, this fact of all black nations in America will be new. As it still is for Negroes and Albion's. It's six five dollar Indians. It's new. It's new to them. Yet it is an important feature of American history. I will here really enumerate the black tribes of which I have found evidence, traces, and remains in North and South America. The Auroras or Coroas or Kanap or Kamana were black. But we find Features in North here, like the Jello and the Bello of Africa. All right? The Estelos, latitude 32, or like the Hottentots. All right? Meaning they have deep behinds. They look like the same people, or who know this on Kohisan. All right? And he breaks it down. He said, and the uh, Limiqua, Tambuki, all right? And many other Negritian tribes, not black, but dark brown, yet complete Negroes with large, thick lips, broad, flat noses, and very ugly with hair crisp or, or curly. In these tribes lives in New California. All right, the Miss Bloody Rock, all right, is some of these tribes that lived in California that he's talking about. New Rock, all right, that is also one of the tribes in which that um, is in my bloodline. So he breaks it down, he calls them very ugly, but that is, once again, Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. I don't expect for Albion to see, especially not during that time period of no damn 1832s, when he would hell us as they had some of our people as slaves and slavery, as they say. Yeah. All right? Um, so not saying slavery did not exist. It did exist. Um, however, some of our people, when they talk about slavery, is... Also, not just talking about slavery, but really we're talking about, um, as we said earlier, sharecropping, which is not per se slavery. Um, so I just want to say that. So we know that it did exist. Slavery did exist. All right. So here, um, the American Negroes of Quariqua and Choco, the great Levy Plains, 900 miles long, 90 wide, separating the Andes and the South American Thunder Mountains of Panama, were black. And the Woody Heads in 1506, they are mentioned by Dengleri and an early accurate writer, of, and all the early accurate writers. So Dengleri and all of the early accurate writers wrote about how these people looked in the Americas. And this was 15 1906, more than a hundred years before the first so-called slave trade by the European claim that he brought all of us here, and the first 20 so-called slaves in 1619. The Yamasee, or Jamasee, were remarkably black people 
notice of Florida and the campaigns. So the niggas always love the hot. We love the heat. We was in Florida. The ancient protocols of Haiti represent a nation, changes up, a nation of beasts by the historical songs. Yeah, they're historical songs. Maybe that's because they was mad because we whipped their ass. The Haitians never been defeated. <laughs> that little ass island that the Dominican Republics uh, don't like the darker skinned brothers on the other side of the damn island. Haitians. But the Haitians are the ones who whipped everybody ass. They whipped the United States ass. They whipped the Britons ass. Okay? They whooped the French ass. Nobody could beat them. All right? They are the Western Ethiopia for us. Ethiopia has never been conquered. Neither has Haiti. And the question is that the Haitians have a large amount of EYB1A Hapner group. The colorful names of the Carib Islands, the Carib Islands, called Black Caribs, or Grammy, or the Grammy by others. The Grand, that's what they refer to as the Grammy, all right, or the colorful names. The colorful names, the colorful names, they were known as the Black Caribs, all right. So we're talking about in Tobago, in Trinidad, in Haiti, in the Dominican Republic, in Cuba, Jamaica, in the Bahamas, all right, and etc. Right, the alcohol of the Katoa mentioned by Garcia in the West Indies, quite black. Well, every place we just named, that is called the West Indies. So that means that the Krawaho or the Arawaho um, are related to the Carib, the Arawaks. These are Arawak, the Auroras of Raleigh and the Aurora of the Spaniards, ugly brown, see, ugly black and brown Negroes, yet existing near the Orinoco, in language known called monkey by their neighbors. And, and who is their neighbors? We're pretty sure that it had to be um, somebody who's been influenced by the Albion. <laughs> the Chamas of Guyana, black or brown Negroes like Hottentots. The Nanjapas and um, the Porsiches of Nienhof, the Motania of Kiva, or all of Brazil, brown Negroes with calm hair. So these are people who was in Brazil who were brown Negroes before the Africans came there, allegedly by the millions. The Europeans brought them there, allegedly. That's why you heard that saying said, uh, uh, we were here before the first Africans. Right. Yeah, we were here before the first Africans, we were here before the first Europeans, and before the first Asians. <laughs> right? Marita of Mora in Doreen, or Doreen, um, Panama, yet existing in Choka, under the name of Chuana or Guana or Chinos, all right? It says ugly brown or red Negroes. The Manabees, all right, or Papayan in Colombia, blackish with Negro features in here. The Guapé and the Jawas of 
Tagugapa, not the Honduras. All right, near Honduras. Well, should we know that? Dr. Sadie comes from Honduras. The Unslav and the Estodos of New California, ugly blackish Negroes. The black Indians met by the Spanish or Spaniards in Louisiana in 1543. Those are in who? They were the Washington, the Choctaw. All right, so to this book. The discovery of America and outgrowth of the conquest of the Moors by the Spaniards. Right? So they refer to the Indians as the Moors. According to this book, the discovery of the Americans. Mm-hmm. Get this book. The discovery of the origin of the Mom of America by Thomas D. Saint, um, um, D. Saint Brass, a bris, breeze, a breeze, yeah, that's a breeze. Let's see that. So right here, the Spanish colonialists adopted the native name of America to designate their first settlement on the mainland to the New World. But in those days, the rule of orthography was undefined. And in addition to the numerous errors of printing, names were spelled in any way which the writer considered most appropriate. And hence, we have America. Not only written as America or Marigo or America, but Marica and Marica and America. But all right, so therefore we are Moors from America, Morocco. Get it? So if you see here the word M O R A C A, you just add an O in, and it becomes America. Which is more. So this, we are Moors from America. We are Moors from America. Which is the same sounding or phonetics as Morocco. So it's not Morocco from Africa. Even though we have ancestry from there too. But it is talking about here in the Americas. The Moors from Morocco. The Moors from Morocco. So when they say, well, where are from? The Moors are from Morocco. America, nigga. <laughs> right here. So when they say that we're not Moors, then they're saying that they're not American. According to this, this is the origin of the name of America. It's Morocco. 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 American Moors. Right. So that's how you destroy that information from any dumbass. To these books, Susu and Susu Nomics or Susu Economics. The history of the Pan African trade, commerce, money, and wealth of these blacks found in America. The Nile Builders. They were dark skinned, woody haired blacks who were indigenous, native to North America and akin to Omex of South America. The Omex in Washington. So see, all these books that I'm showing you speak about Washington, but yet they're saying that Washington don't exist. <laughs> how is we how do we don't how we don't exist, but yet there's dozens of books written about us. The Omex of Washington, Black California, Zamasis on the um Kalifanami, and the other pre-Columbian blacks of the Marx was part of a prehistoric trade network that began in Africa and spread it worldwide over 100,000 years ago at various periods afterwards. Right here. Leaving South America, Dr. Albert Goodyear, a South Carolina University professor, say humans lived along the east bank of the Savannah River 50,000 years ago. For 51,700 years, North American site found in Allenborough County, South Carolina, by the Savannah River, is less than 30 miles from the Atlantic Ocean. The evidence for the ancient African migration came in multiple forms, skulls and skeletons, footprints and lava, campsites, genetic m one f 4 and d groups, linguistics, paintings, carvings, Architecture, Egyptian writer, 
Egyptian writing means hieroglyphics, metrometric, artifacts, and sculptures, or, or structures, excuse me. So remember, we just seen Jesus, or Jose, um, or I should say not Jose, but um, uh, uh, Jesus. We just seen Jesus break down that the old mix made who? The Nubian Egyptians. Now we see now now they allegedly was just here five thousand years ago. I believe that they took off a goddamn zero. <laughs> That's all they did was took off a zero. So instead of saying fifty thousand years they took they took it to mean five thousand years. But yet Dr. Albert Goodyear found out that they had to, they had Egyptian writing here. And they had Egyptian writing here dating back to 50,000 years ago? 51,700 years ago. Egyptian writing. Artifacts. And structures. What type of structures? Well, we know about, we know about the structures that's in the Grand Canyon. The 18 temples. That's what we do know about. So, his data, this data exposes the false premise that the first Americans came from Asia once and for all. So remember, this is before the Bering Strait. This is the Paleo-Americans. This is your ancestry. The first Americans were Africans. You get the book by David Imhotep, PhD. All right, right here. I'm going to try to read this. He said, identity of the first Americans. The Africans were the first Americans and that they lived 51,000 years prior at the, um, then they asked the Mongolians. And so here we were here 51,000 years prior to the Mongolians. Remember, the Mongolians were coming to 459 AD. We showed that already. Okay? 459 AD. We was already here 51,000 years before the Mong Mongoloids or Mongolians. So, as usual, instead of keeping our bloodline pure, we like to mix with these various races. Which is only three. You have the Negroid, the Takakasoid, and, um, Asia. And then we have the mulattoes of which that comes from the mixing of those three. The first Americans were black. The scholarly Latin author C. C. McQuist explained the strong possibility that the black people were the first people in America, out of which later came the word American race. Yeah, much later. Because we were here over 51,000 years, 100,000 years before. As the emperor's already told us that we've been here over 100,000 years. And then you add in the fact that they just got here 459 A.D. And from that mixing, along with the Spaniard, the Britons, and the rest of them, is how we get the lighter Indians, Native Americans. And then add on the fact that the $5 uh, uh, Indians, 
The Albion figured his way into the Dolph Row, getting five dollars. This is what we get. But the original were us, and it's always been. Whether in Africa, whether in Asia, in Europe, which is Asia Minor, or in the Americas. We were the first all over the world! As I've already stated. So I said, it is likely that we repeated long ago that this for America was also a Negro continent. And that the, so you're talking about the Hobo, you're talking about North, South, Central, the Jordan Islands, the whole thing, the whole thing, America, Americana, the Negro continent, and that the Ottomans of Mexico, the, um, the Caracos of Haiti, the Matanga of Brazil, and the um, Albinos of Panama, or the remnants of the Aboriginal Negro race out of which developed later, which is known as the Red or American race. Later, Professor Alexander von Rutenow expect unexpected faces in ancient America, as how black people were present in America in the most ancient and pre and pre um, pre classical times. The startling fact is that in all parts of Mexico, archaeological pieces representing Negroes and Negro people have been found, especially in archaic or pre classic sites. The presence of Negroes at their training masters in America before Columbus, said Professor Lee um, Leo Wheeler, is proven by the representation of Negroes in America sculpture and design. But more specifically by Columbus emphasis referencing to new trades from Guinea who traffic in gold alloy on um, Guinea and precisely the same compilation and bearing the name as frequently referenced to by early writers in Africa. You get this from Africa, Africa and the discovery of America. All right. <laughs> in this regard, the testimony of Nicholas Leon proves the instructive on how ancient and um, the African presence was in America. In fact, he said that the black people were the original people of Mexico. So that means they are the original people of of America. Just that simple. The almost extinction of original Negroes during the time of the Spanish conquest in the memoirs of them in the most ancient traditions induce us to believe that the Negroes were the first inhabitants of Mexico. <coughs> okay. So, it goes on and on and on. This is um, Carlos um, Guavo uh, uh, Mark Reeves. All right. This is who's, he, he said that we repeat America was a Negro continent. And I will repeat that too. America was a Negro continent. <laughs> the black gods of ancient America. So the blacks began his career in America, not as slave, but as master. But the only thing that Negroes want to focus on is that they were slaves. I'd be happy when we get back to being masters. So my DNA states not only am I an indigenous aboriginal to the American, to the Americas, North, Central, South, but also the Caribbean islands, the of West Indies, called Americana, but to Africa, Asia, and Europe. Why? Because we're the oldest people on the planet Earth. Europeans just came upon planet Earth 6,000 years ago. The Chinese 4,000 years ago. So if you are claiming Siberian heritage, coming across the Bering Strait, then your ancestry met mine, because we was already here. Professor Dr. Uh, um, Dr. Albert Goodyear, as we already stated, stated that our ancestry that you refer to as Africa was in the Americas over 50,000 years ago. Therefore, the only way in which that you can be indigenous is through my or our bloodline. Get it? Treaty with the Comanche, we talked about this already. The Cherokee, Muscogee, Choctaw, Osage, Seneca, Quapaw, 
the Wichita and Comanche. How do the old saints look? Well, according to Lewis Henry Morgan, the Indian Journals, 1859 to 1862, he says the old the old the Kwa, and the Kwa Pa. Now, hold on, who, who, who is here? You see Osage, Silicon, and Kwapa. You saw the Osage and Kwapa. Well, hold up. He's writing about how the Osage and the Kwapa looked. He said, speaks the same language with slight dialectical differences. The Osage and the Kwa are both very dark skinned. Ooh, okay. So a considerable proportion of the blood of the southern Negroes of the United States is unquestionably Indian. This is from the Smithsonian. This is the Bureau Annual Report of the Bureau of America, all right? It says black Indians are not solely a result of African slave mixing with red Indians as we, um, they would have us to believe. Black Indians are indigenous to this land before the so-called red man, as we have been proven, before the Europeans, as we have been proven, before, before the so-called Great Plains Indians. Be able to prove that. We, the Olmecs, the Washita, the Moors, the Yamases, the mound builders, planted the seed of civilization in this country, America. Today we are the remnants of these elders, and it is time that we reveal the bigger picture, our true legacy, not as African slaves, not as immigrants, not as runaways, but as what we truly are. We are indigenous Washita Moors. All right? Moors, not Indians. <laughs> So, this is the last part. Sorry we on here so long, but this is the last part. And we got to get a United Nations IPO 2421 via the United Nations IPP 215-1993 or 215-93. So, if you go to unitednations.org or un.org, right slash en for English, right slash, all right? Matter of fact, go here. And um, pull this information up, and I'm going to show you how to tap into the treaties at the Washington. All right. Hopefully everybody is there. So, I'm here. This, this, is, this is where people say, well, the Washington isn't on the United Nations website. <laughs> because they don't know how to do any research. Right. So, here we go. United Nations or UN.org, right slash EN English, right slash. To the United Nations. All right, so you go to treaties.unitednations.org. So you get on to unitednations.org, then you go to treaty collection or treaties.unitednations.org or un.org. 
This is where you will find our documentation. Now, only treaties can do treaties with other nations. So if Washington isn't who we say that we are, why are we listed in the treaty section? <laughs> right, right. Hmm. Here is my UN or United Nations card. This is from 2009, May 29, 2009. You can clearly see that's me, L. Bay, last name, 2009. My number at that time was 105643. So. The only way you can get into the United Nations is to show ID that you belong to an indigenous tribe. We got that. This, that is, this, is, this is one reason why the more science temple members with their flimsy card cannot get into the United Nations. <laughs> not with that card. So therefore, they're not linked back to the families of nations. Technically, as Prophet Abdullah told us to do. As you see here to the right, this is an invitation letter from the United Nations. This is April 14th, 2008, five days before my born day. And they refer to me as Prince Alim El Bay. So, before most of the world knew, <laughs> all right, but before most of the people who watch YouTube or who study this indigenous information, aboriginal information, the, who refer to as the chief secretary of the permanent form of indigenous issues, referred to me as Prince Ali Melbourne. So this is the letter. I have the, I have the pleasure to confirm the participation of your organization as observers in the seventh session of the permanent form of indigenous issues scheduled to take place from April 21st to May 2nd, 2008 at the United Nations headquarters in New York. On arrival at the United Nations headquarters, representatives of accredited entities. <laughs> so Washington is accredited. Organizations of indigenous people, non-governmental organizations, and academic institutions requiring ground passes for admission. So you have to have a ground pass for admissions to the United Nations premise as advised to go through the visitor Entrance. You can't just go walking into the United Nations. See, all these niggas come out. Uh, see, this this is them trying to act big and bold and talk on YouTube. That's beautiful. But I'm going in their faces. I'm going into judges' faces, lawyers' faces, DA's faces. I'm going into... The world, we've gone into the world scene, into their faces. So the, the Moore Science Temple of America can't go into the, to the United Nations? No, because they're not accredited entities. So they can talk all that, like I said, they can talk about good shit at the temple with five and ten members. <laughs> And I hate to be rash like that, you know, because this is another thing. Yes, we are associated, and I can talk because, number one, the Empress is my cousin. Number two, Prophet of Jali is my cousin. So they're not recognized by the United Nations. They can be, but not in the present. They can be, but not in the present way in which that they have on anything going, no. So here, organizations of indigenous people, 
which that's who we were, non-governmental organization and academic institutions requiring ground passes for admissions to the United Nations pre um, premises or advised to go through the visitor's entrance at 46th Street and 1st Ave Avenue where they had confined a team of staff members for the Division of Social Policies and Development, DSPD, available to assist them with the registration process. Registration will tentatively take place between uh, beginning school on uh, Monday the 21st, and it will take place from 7 a.m. to 3.45 p.m. From Tuesday 22, and from the duration of the forum, registration may be conducted from 9 a.m. to 3.45 p.m. every day. Depending on the pace of registration, the registration desk may close from 12.30 p.m. to 2 p.m., for lunch break. Participants attending only side events shall register early in the morning before the holding of those events. Under no circumstances, the registration will be conducted solely for side events held from 1.15 p.m. to 2.45 p.m. I should also like to take this opportunity to inform you that documents related to this form will be posted on the internet and they'll also be available. So, as you see, also, you, you, when you have these Negroes coming out, talking about they are the uh, uh, crown prince, this, and they died, and this, and they can't show any letters or identity such as um, United Nations identification card or the letter from the United Nations. This is this is how I had to destroy that dude who came out came out to my he's the eighth this and that of the Miss Hon Rouge and you know, now you don't even hear about him no more. <laughs> no, we didn't understand no more. You notice that? No, I'm sense. No. Right. We're not, right. Like we, disappeared or something. Right, 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 right. Because keep your mouth shut and keep my name particularly out out your mouth because I destroyed you with the information. And that goes for anybody, you know what I'm saying, trying to um, lie and say that Washington don't exist. Or trying to say as if, you know, because the Washington is the only ones who can prove actual land claims. Everybody else is chilling on reservations. <laughs> That's another thing. That's another thing. We're the only ones that got a land grant. Right. So. We're the only ones. Right. So, so, so this is something in which that we can't let fall to the side, Chiefs. We got to promote this and, yo, know, tell the world. Because right now, what they're doing isn't working. For additional information regarding the registration to attend this session of the permanent forum, do not hesitate to contact Mr. Yao um, Ming Goran, um, Chief NGO Unit. Division for Social Policy and the Development, DC 2 1324, United Nations, New York 10017. Um, and we look forward to meeting you at the uh, forthcoming session of the Permanent Forum of Indigenous Issues. Best regards, your sincerely, um, your sincerely. And of course, this is Esavet, um, Elizabeth, um, Astam, Astamato, and Polo, right? Um, who is the chief? Um, Secretaries of the Permanent Forum of Indigenous Affairs, and of course, this is coming from um, the Sheik Clan of the Yamasee Native American Lives. As you know, it's Washington. We are in um, treaty with the Yamasee by way of our Chief Ambassador, who is actually the head of the Sheik Clan um, Yamasee Lives. All right, um, I Tarif. All right. So Tarif um, L, I believe, um, he's the one in which that is our chief ambassador of affairs at the United Nations. Anyone who wants to log up with him and learn the procedures for us as United Washington, contact me, and I will try to put you in contact with him, and he can go over more information concerning. Because we have to start doing this annually, once again, at the United Nations. We will get back into this. This is necessary. 
Okay. Ali. Yes. Hey, uh, I remember when you told us to uh, type in search.un.org and it, and then type in Washtenaw. But you can also, what you just said, too, type in uh, unitednations.org. You put treaties right behind it to bring up the same thing. Right. Put up treaties right behind it. Thank you. Put in treaties. And so right here, you see my wife, she got a letter also. And it says, Princess Kedera Maad El Bay. All right, so we have been recognized as such. So no one can come and attempt to steal <laughs> any position, all right, when this is on the world scene. So here we have search. You go to, uh, once you get to the treaties on site, you can put in Washita. Now you can put in Washita, and everything in Washita pulls up. Right, right here, you got the final list of attendance, and you see here, Empire Rashtar did that down on you, Mr. Paul Miles. We go here, um, to the second one, Rashtar National Moors. Now, when we get to 2007, 2008, that is us. That is the United Rashtar, or the Rashtar National Moors. That is us who were going to these. Um, forums. You want to say our 2009 batch, but we've been going since 2007. All right, so right now, when it says Watch Tour Nation of Moors, that's us. At the 10 of the 6, attendees of the 6th session of the permanent forum, Watch, um, Watch Tour Nation of Moors. 10 of the 6th session of Moors, once again, that's, this is 2007, the other one is 2008, and that is us. Washington Nation of Moors. That's how we went. All of us went as the Washington Nation of Moors to the United Nations. Okay? This is what we are proving here. But when we say that the Washington is not on the United Nations website, then where the hell did I get all of this information? You just don't know how to research. You're thinking that you're a researcher and you're flawed in your thinking, and you're flawed in your scholarship. Right here. Washington did that the money. Empire Washington did that the money. 1997. 1998. Washington did that the money. Mm -hmm. the, it says, reported on the working group on indigenous population on its 19th session. This is 2001. Mm -hmm. Here in 1999, Washington did that money. 1996, Washington did that money. 1999, Washington. And it says, Tunica, Gaston, L. Bay. So, Verde Asi, T.R.L., Washington, Tunica, Gaston, L. Bay, and Mr. Paul Miles. Um, this is 1996. Um, excuse me, 1999 is here on this one. This is the one, two, three, fourth one. Um, Brown um, and um, Brown and Harold. All right, Dr. Harold. So, here... Right then we go down to 1999 again, the last one said, uh, once again, Veriasi, Tierra, Rashita, Tonica, Gaston, L. Bay, and others. Right now, 1999 was the same year that the Empress bestowed the title Crown Prince upon Prince Ramesses Abel Bay, known as Prince Hutan Tupac Bay. He received that title of Crown Prince. 1999, June 7th, 1999, it was a birthday gift for him, because he was born on June 7th, a Gemini, and he's also my cousin. So, it's no coincidence that the reason why they put fire under my behind is because I'm related to them. 
trying to get this word out, trying to get an understanding. But everybody want to want to have an ego. I just want the truth. So yeah, 1997, Eastern Cherry Tom, then you got Empire Washington did that them on you. Here's some more. I go on and on and on. Yes. I can't hear you. Yes, yes, definitely. Is it three hundred dollars? Yes. And the PayPal is Cultural Freedom, C-U-L-T-U-R-A-L, Cultural Freedom, F-R-E-E-D-O-M, Cultural Freedom. So, they say, well, the 215 number 93 don't exist. It don't? Then how are we here at the United Nations Economic and Social Council? This is a permanent form on indigenous issues, six session, and you look over to your right, who do you see? The Washington Nation of Moors. This is 2007. This is when I began going to the United Nations. This is us, United Washington, <coughs> went as United Nation of Moors. And our brother clan is the Yamasee Native Americans, Mount Arafat clan embassy. These are the two nations that was accepted by King Frederick Joe or Joseph Washington, the Empress' son. We, however, out of the two, was the only one in which that got the chance to say the Empress herself in 2004, May 2004, just a week or so after her born day. And she was very excited about seeing us. And she told us specifically, she said, do y'all have my book? And we said, yes, ma'am, we got the book, we got it, we read it. That's why we're here. And she said, and she said good, because that's what y'all going to need to continue this on. So she already passed the power to us. And continue to work. Right. She already passed the power to us. Darlene, can you spell that one more time, the PayPal name? Cultural Freedom? Yes, C-U-L-T-U-R-A-L-F-E, let me see, F-R-E-E-D-O-M, Cultural Freedom, at Yahoo.com. Or whatever the PayPal thing is. I think that's what it is. Yeah, culturefreedomyahoo.com. So here, as you see, this is 2007, May 2007. This is my, this, this is my first year going. This is 2007 in New York. And so you see us, Washington Nation of Moors. That was us. With the Yamasee Native Americans. That was us. He will have back in July 1999, July 30th, 1999. And what do you see? In the Commission of Human Rights in the Economic and Social Council. You see Empire Washington D. Doug Dominion. Here, this is New York, April the 21st through 2nd May 2008. This is also us again. When myself, my wife, and others uh, went with us, <coughs> Washington Nation of Morals. Here it is again, April the 14th, um, excuse me, May the 14th through the 25th, United Nation of Morals, Washington Nation of Morals. 
So when they say that we don't exist, then we're, how are we finding all this information? Right. Here is ec- economic and social council again. And what is this talking about? Reports of the Working Group of Indigenous Populations on its 15th session. <coughs> Empire Rashtra Vita Ramanya. Here is Prevention of Discrimination, Prevention of Discrimination and Protection of Indigenous People. Reports of the Working Group of Indigenous Populace, Populations on its 22nd session. This is the chairperson of Repertoire. Uh, Miguel Alfonso uh, Marte, Martinez, 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 excuse me, Martinez. So that is Empire Washington did that the money. Once again, Empire Washington did that the money. Here it is again, Washington, Empire Washington did that the money. August the 12th, 1999, Washington did that money. And understand, these sessions are in Geneva. Our sessions are in New York. The Empress told us that um, we should only be dealing with the Geneva United Nations. However, um, the United Nations in New York is the closest one for us. Otherwise, it's a large bill and we said we would have to go to Geneva. Um, the last time that we went was probably Joe. Um, he took, um, we was able to go. My wife and I, um, he asked us to go. But um, our chief of staff ended up going in which that he had to end up um, talking about inf- information in which that <clears throat> he was not supposed to talk about. So he had to end up apologizing for um, spilling the beans on some of the projects in which that they was working on. But that's another story. So right here, as you see, um, over the 19th, 1998, you see Rostro Dudek Money. Permanent form on indigenous issues. You see right here, reports of five sessions, um, May 15th through the 26th, 2006. And who do you see? Empire Rostro Nation of Moors. Right? That is when our ambassador um, went. And as you see down further, you can see Mount Arafat Embassy Clan UMC Native Americans. All right. <clears throat> and you see here, reports on the working group of Cut out. I don't know. Sound like sound like you did. Yeah, it sounded like you did. Sound like you're trying to get back on. Yeah, it looked like his mic went out. Oh no. Yeah, I wanted to tell everybody that those who don't, don't know that uh, Memorial Day is not a so-called, quote-unquote, white man's holiday. As I hear some, some, some people be saying. That was started by the uh, 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 Civil War veterans for the uh, so-called blacks that died on the battlefields and the Civil War on both sides. They started that. They created that. So, but as you know, Europeans always want to get on the bandwagon. They kind of took it over. Uh, 
don't know if you already know. I don't know. Some of you may know, know that already. I, I don't know. But I said I passed that around. I found that out not too long ago. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. I passed that around, yeah. Why, as I say, originally, you know, it wasn't a European holiday originally. But you know how they do. They forgot about, forget about us, you know. So a lot of Civil War veterans and their families just start commemorating themselves. Yeah, they forget about us all the time. Yeah, you know. It got so big, got so large that, you know, everybody else jumped on the bandwagon. Yeah, it's a good idea. Why don't we make it for all the Civil War veterans? Yeah, you know, now they want to know. Then they want to do it. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. These people funny, man. Yeah. You know, they, 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 <laughs> they all the change. Oh, they didn't like that shit. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> they yeah. The way that we unify this information, they don't, they don't like that. Too bad. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, you didn't spill. got too much information today. So, Eileen, pouring us using treaties because the 13th and 14th yes. Amendment didn't help us. So I know we you could you know right. stick to Article Six, Section Two. Yeah, six. Yeah, Article Six. And because you know, as we can prove, our information is in the treaty section at the United Nations, so that's international law. Yeah, we can prove that. Indeed. <laughs> so, um. That's just what it is. Also, that American Declaration of Rights and Indigenous People, too, right? Yep. Yeah. I love it. What, what, uh, what B.A. Barakas used to say, I love it when a plan comes plan come together. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still got to get that Declaration of Rights of American Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. You can download it, uh, Fahim. Just type it in. It's downloadable. Okay. It read the same as the uh under it in the first world order. Okay. That's that Bible, man. I love it. Oh yeah. I need, I need another one. Sometime I go to bed with it. I'm hey. asleep trying to read that book. <laughs> hey. You you heard feelings with that book. I know I have. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Like, ass, he saying, though. like he was saying earlier with them so-called natives, you shut them, shut them down too. The first thing they want to say, you came on a slave ship. No, 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 no. Exactly. My DNA say something different, dude. Yeah. Shut them down even, quick. even with the uh, queen of uh, Hawaii, I forget her name, Lulu, I forget her whole name. Mm -hmm. as, soon as, you, as soon as you put that information, that shut them down too. Yep. Sure do. Yeah. Sure do. That's the whoop ass book. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> you gotta laugh at it. You're like, where y'all come from? Like Johnny, come lately. What you, what you doing? Exactly. So they're trying to say we culture vultures, but wait, you don't know your history. You know. Uh -huh. Now why is it that they don't know their history? That's the question. <laughs> man, you still don't I, know I, it. I came across a Yamasee. He wanted to say, oh, we not Moors. I said, oh, wow, bro. Mm-hmm. No. Nope. I said, it's too much out there for that, for you to be doing that. Exactly. But he was doing that really? polygamy. I think he had a cult thing going. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Yeah. 
Uh, I ain't seen him since. <laughs> he still uh-huh. mad at me. He got mad at me. I was like, dude, I'm not doing. I'm, see, I'm trying to help you. Put your piece right. of the puzzle together. You, you want to be right. go chase that check? I say I'm not chasing that check, bro. Right. I don't even know right. why you would want to do that anyway. Right, because hell, we, hell, if we put it together, we will need. We can take the money and wish that they get, and then do what we need to do for ourselves. Right. right. I wonder if he's saying it ain't no more. He's getting that check. All right. Yeah. Uh. I, uh. They. They. Uh, well, on that clubhouse thing, they. I didn't, you know, they got Phoenix. They all mad today for some reason. I don't entertain it because I just shut them down. Her and Dane Callaway now, but they be upset. Yeah, yeah. Like, won't y'all just, won't y'all just do right? Exactly, and unify this thing instead of all that damn separation, left hemisphere thinking. Yeah. You know. But yet they can't see it. But shit, yeah, you explain like, left, left brain, right brain. They still don't get it. Yeah, I know. It's because they two left brain. Shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's why. Yeah, hey, I'll be like, damn it, yeah, you'll push a, a a sober person to drink just trying to explain it. Be like, why don't you take your time, breathe, breathe and hold with each word until it gets to you. <laughs> and then some, you know, they think it'll come overnight. Like, hey man, that don't. Man. I don't know about that. You know. But whatever you do, I would say take your time with it. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's the same thing I told the people uh, when they said it was I said, most of you are not going to catch on to what I just, on what just happened here until five years from now. Uh, yeah, I've seen <laughs> it. I, I loved it. Like I said, I knew, of, you know, he loud talking. I was like, hey, you know, he cool. But it's like, come on, man. I know you wasn't going to bust a great. When he came to St. Louis, they was going, they ran him up out of here. Oh, for real? Yeah, he came and did. You know, he was got to talking. They talking about uh, uh, uh. What he say? Uh, what he used to say about the uh, you know, how he said the cracker. Uh, what was that? Where he say uh, dang, what he used to his his little cliche saying uh, bang on the beast. And I guess he was talking to them wrong tomorrow. Y'all ain't gonna bang on nothing. And they showed him. All right, we finna go ahead and do something to you here, partner. You might not make it home. Dang. Yeah. I forgot who was that brother that, who yes. brought him here. Do you have a class on writing writs and on research? Yes. Um, What's the name of that course? It's, it's in this class, but we'll get to it. We oh. might have to deal with the historical information because there's so much going on. So in between this, uh, we will be dealing with the writs. We will be dealing with um, UCCs. We will be dealing with... Um, authentication um, of the of the um, birth certificate oh, okay. on the four form, which is a foreign ninety eight form on the trust, uh, in particular the common law irrevocable trust or express trust, um, and different other things. So we will be dealing um, in that information. Right now, we're just trying to um, get this um, straight as far as um, our history, so that everybody on here. And our family members know, and that they can protect themselves against all the nonsense of which that is out here right now. You know, whether it's coming from um, those who claim to be um, Aboriginal, or those claiming to not to be Moors, and those who say they're Moors but they not from here, they're from Africa, or the ones who, I mean, all, all the dumb stuff that we've been hearing. But when it comes to DNA, DNA kills all of that. You know, these damn teeth in our mouths kill all of that. You know? So can you all see the screen again? Yeah, we see it. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh... I was explaining earlier when the, when the, when you went off that minute that that about Memorial Day, uh-huh. it's not it's not the European um, or so-called white man's holiday. Right. So originally, it's not. Originally, it's not. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was dropping that. You know, I heard some brothers on YouTube talking about that's you know the so-called white man's holiday. You know, right. it's not. Right. Originally, it started by uh, uh, Moors who fought in the Civil War. Right. 
started amongst them, you know, mm-hmm. both sides, the Confederate and Union. Mm-hmm. And it got so large that, you know, the Europeans, as usual, uh, how they know how they do, they got on a bandwagon. Right. You know. And uh, I heard about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. As I said, I said, found that out. I put on with those. You know, originally it was it was started by you know so-called uh, black civil war veterans. Okay. Yes. Yeah, see. All right. So here we have once again. We go to treaties or go to United Nations. dot org. You put in Washington, or uh, excuse me, Washington. Um, you can put in treaty, United Nations, or United Nations um, treaties, and the section will pull up um, as stated. And here it is, um, 38 findings for the Washington, as you see. And actually, the, the documents that is, um, there were some earlier documents that were given to me back in 19, had to be 1997, 98, by um, Dr. Aquila. So, um, Dr. Aquila, me and her used to do lectures. This is when I first started doing lectures in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and we would do lectures on, and she was, um, she was Washita. And we would do lectures on um, Tantra Kriya Yoga. Um, cultivating the male energy and cultivating the female energy. Now, similar to what Mantai Chia and also what I end up um, teaching and learning from my t- my personal teacher, my wife and my personal teacher, is Sanyata um, Saraswati. So, these forms, which are here to the to the um, middle and to the left, I mean, excuse me, to the right, middle to the right are actual forms in which that um, she gave me. And to me, that verified the Washington information. And this is back in um, the late 90s. Like I said, around 97, um, 98. All right? So, <coughs> she allowed for me to make copies of the Documentation. So that's my first time um, getting documents, you know, on the Washington from the United Nations. So it was already proof to me, all right, back in 97, 98, when she gave me the documents, all right. Plus, my teacher at the time, Crown Prince Hutan Tupac Bay, formerly known as Prince Ramesses Labor Bay, he was already teaching me this information. So it even made it more interesting as he was the head of security, one of the head of security for the Empress. All right, since 1991. All right, and I got with him in 1995. So four years after he joined the Washington, he began teaching me. All right. So thanks to him and Dr. Akila, um, she's now um, does uh, work in uh, Washington D.C. Um, area or the D.V. Um, D.M.V. area, um, but she used to be uh, losing live in Atlanta. But before she left, she's the one who gave me these documents. And then in 2003, some of 2003. Um, We end up getting more documentation from um, Ravana Bay. Okay. So as you see, how business nations, organizations. And you see, Master Tour did that dominion. All right, so just keep showing over and over again for those 
um, who act like they can't do any research or find Washita, um we find it easy when we go. Alright. So as you see here, these are proof that the United Nations and our, um, that the Washita Empire Washita and the Washita Nation which is United Washita Nation or at the United Nations <coughs> and we've gone to the United Nations you have people who are just talking nonsense on YouTube and don't know a damn thing. And that's the problem. And you have all these hundreds and thousands of people following these dumbasses. But having shown them one fucking piece of document. Niggas just getting up there being waiting on running the goddamn mouth. Where's the doc where's the proof at? You show me the goddamn receipts. I show the receipts every time I do a documentation. Or every time I do a lecture. Every time I do um a viewing. Here it is, Prevention of Discrimination, and um, the chairperson, um, Rapporteur, or Rapporteur, uh, Rapporteur um, Miss Erica Ivan Day, and um, as you see here, Empire Washington. And as you see here, um, this is August 17th, 2000. Representative of the Washington people drew the attention of the working groups to the blocking of World Bank funding allegation to his organization. So who was blocking the funding from the World Bank? The World Bank was getting ready to fund that. That's what it says. The representatives of the Washington people drew the attention of the working group to the blocking of World Bank funding allegated to his organization. So the United Nations was allegated funds from the World Bank. And we're talking about millions of dollars. Well, I can tell you right now that the United States did not like that shit. Of course, we're not state, federally, um, or federally recognized. And we went straight to the damn World Bank to get funded through the United Nations. Because in the United Nations, some of this shit is um, just like we see with the vaccine. Um, and with the... Um, Biden just going this past week to the events. I think it was in Geneva, Switzerland. What happened? Or in Europe. So in Europe, what happened? The African countries threw their weight around. And Joe Biden selling away the rights of the people, the sovereignty of the people, got rejected by the African countries. They're not used to that. No. Nothing like that. Right. Mm. <laughs> exactly. And why would the African countries come to our rescue? Because that was going to affect us specifically. The selling away of the rights of the people. In particular, money the people. July the 30th, 1999, as you see, Empire Washington, do that pneumonia. Keep going on and on and on. August 16th, 1996, Washington, do that pneumonia. New are yet oldest indigenous people on the earth. 
the oldest indigenous people on earth. Order the 16th, 1996. And that's where we come from. We come from the oldest indigenous people on earth. July 30th, 1999, Empire Washington, Dutek Demonia. So it just keeps showing us over and over again our connections. And we're known as Moors. Right, known as Moors. Oldest people on earth. Oldest people on earth. Indigenous, ab, uh, Aboriginal, yes. All right. Um, we've been on here long enough. <laughs> I didn't even realize it was eight o'clock, y'all. All right. Um, I appreciate everybody. I'm gonna say, hey, I take you watch Taish. Huh? I so say you putting that work in. Watch Taish. Yeah. I appreciate that. you, guys. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate y'all. You know, cause we need this information because there's a lot of things we're gonna have to correct. So I just want to make sure everybody know how to do it. Appreciate that, God. Appreciate you, God. Appreciate you, God. Got it. Peace. 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 Peace.